Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from Los Angeles. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. It is Friday. Yeah, Feeling yeah. good? How yeah, you see, I got my own black on the stage. Y'all, y'all see that out there? How y'all doing? Kind of all doing that. What? I've never seen such <laughs> egomania in my life. And what is this cross business? What, cause, cause I'm about to do you something. with the cross on? That's I'm, blasphemous. I'm about to do something bad to you, so I'm already really? asking for, forgive so, so, me for my ways today. So, so you're saying Jesus <laughs> over Lil Wayne? Okay, I, you got me on that one. I mean, As, I, I mean Lil Wayne is godlike to me, but what? but if, if you're going Jesus over Lil Wayne, I guess I got to give in to that I one. Mean, you, I, you got me. You come out here with a mock neck. I come out here with a turtleneck. Okay. Black, black. I mean, so what? I mean, what's wrong? The I mean, turtle. You mean, the turtle is trying to catch the hair. That's what it is. I mean, imitation and, is the highest form. By of the family. way, before I hand it back to Jenny, yeah. what happened I, now? I, I, I'm thinking your man LeBron had maybe. An extra glass of wine last night? What was that tweet after the game about? Nothing. You can't do Not that. Yeah, you can. He did it. Huh? Go do it again. How many what? followers does he have? Yeah, we're, we're listening. Ah. Sucks. All I know is I need more diamonds over here because I'm blinded <laughs> by what's happening on that desk. He'll uh, be hating on me, y'all. Seriously, everyone looking sharp. But we're going to begin the show by discussing the latest with everything concerning the Brian Flores lawsuit. Now, here's the situation, guys. The Texans and Saints are reportedly still considering him as as a finalist for their coaching vacancy. And meanwhile, John Elway vehemently denied Flores' allegations towards him and the Broncos, calling them false and defamatory. And the Giants also rebutted the claim, releasing a detailed itinerary of their meeting with the former Dolphins coach in writing to base that allegation on a text exchange with Bill Belichick in which he ultimately states that he thinks Brian Dayball would get the job is irresponsible. So, Shannon... Right now, last couple days, this latest news, what is your reaction? Well, these are the very responses that I expected to get, Skip. We've seen a lot of lawsuits and, and things filed in, in the past 50, 20, 50, 20, 50 years. Yep. There's never been a lawsuit filed when the person, then the corporation of the individual that's being sued say, you know what? That's exactly what I did. What they're alleging I did, I did that. Yep. Of course they're going to come out and say that didn't happen. And when we started talking about this, Skip, I said it's going to be very hard to prove without documentation, without cooperating witnesses. Yep. I don't know how you prove it's a he said, he said. And now you thought Colin Kaepernick got white ball. Boy, you got because Colin Kaepernick was trying to bring something. This was the greater good of society. It was. This is Brian Flores taking on 32 yeah, individuals. Yeah. To your point, <laughs> Colin didn't attack the league. league. No. He he attacked society yes. in general, broad base. He just used the league's platform yes. to get his point Correct. across. Okay. Brian Flores is basically attacking the league. He said, but what he said is that these 32 NFL teams do not give blacks, minorities, fair opportunities at head coaching. Mm. They bring us in for sham interviews, knowing good and well they're not going to hire us. The, lead, the teams are going to say, no, we give you the same opportunity. We brought you in for three hours. I think Elway's documentation said we had a three, three and a half hour interview. We sat yep. down and gave you the same opportunities. Uh, we afforded the other candidates. Yep. Steven, uh, Steven, Steven Ross is going to say, I didn't do, offer you no $100,000 mm -hmm. to uh, lose ball games. Jimmy Haslam had a strong statement uh, coming out against you. So, Skip, they're saying all the things that you and I and everybody thought they would say. No one's going to come out and say, yeah, that's what happened. And without documentation, Skip, without wi uh, cooperating witnesses, I don't know how you prove this. I, don't, I just I just don't because they're going to say, look, we hired the best guy for the job. Yeah. Who are you to say you're more qualified than that guy? Mm -hmm. Who are you to say that wasn't the best job, the best guy for the job that we gave the job to? Yeah. And so I just think Brian Flores is up against it. I, I, I commend him for taking on this uphill challenge because that's what it is. It is a very tough climb. And, and to get there, to, to get to that standard, I just don't know how he does it, Skip, unless someone says, you know what, I heard that conversation. Yep. And this is what he said. He said this, 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 and this. Then you might have something. But outside of that, Skip, how do you, how do you prove you didn't get the job solely on the color of your skin? Mm. I don't know how you do that. So, Brian Flores, you're, you're up against it. I'm going to commend you. But... These teams are going to do everything in their pot, Skip. They're going, to, they're going to band together now because 32 against one. Right now, it's 32 against one. 
I know Hugh Jackson is, is kind of signed on a little bit, but it's kind of tough for Hugh because you had like two and a half, two and three quarters, really, really bad years. And they says, well, well, what happened when you left? You were two, five, and one when you were here. And then when you left, we went five and three. So clearly, so I, I get it. But Brian, whew, good luck with this one, Skip. I just don't know how he wins it. I don't. Okay, to, to underscore your point times 100, I, I so admire what this man did. Mm-hmm. It might be wrongheaded. It, it might be completely without plan, w- w- with, without a reasonably achievable goal. Yes. But somebody had to do it, and he finally did it. Mm-hmm. He stepped up and readily admitted, I am risking my future in the NFL. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he didn't just risk it, he blew it. Right. I think it's over for Brian Flores in the NFL, and I hope to God that I'm yeah. wrong about that. But I didn't see his lawsuit coming. And even though you say this is predictable, what what came back at him, mm-hmm. th- this is full force attack mode. Yeah. This is the NFL banding together mm-hmm. and saying, we're not going to just see you in court. We're, we're going to see you in the court of public opinion right here, right now. Mm-hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. The first salvo was fired, as you said, later at night, two nights ago, by Stephen Ross. Mm-hmm. He's a pretty respected owner. He's a powerful man. Yes. And he fired back point A, B, C. I categorically denied, denied, denied. Right. And the only accusation that still stands as the, the tipping point of all this is that that Brian Flores accused Stephen Ross of offering him $100,000 per loss. loss Correct. To throw games, to fix and throw games, to tank for two or whoever it was for. Right. And that still stands as the flashpoint of all of this. Yes. To the point that we both immediately concurred that if that's true, that owner has to go. He has to go, yes. But to your initial point... No money changed hands because Brian said no. Right. According to Brian. Correct. So there's there's no paper trail. There's no money trail. Right. You you can't prove a thing because he said no. Right. He declined. Right. So to your point, your evidence is what? Right. Your word. Mm -hmm. And we've seen him on interview after interview, and he is highly credible in his interviews. Well, what should have happened, Skip, when that happened, he should have went to the league. Okay. Says, you, you could certainly because make because that's normally what happens, Skip. When you're when someone propositions you to do something illegal, yep. you're supposed to go to the authorities. Therefore, you're free and clear if something ever comes back because they're gonna say, "Well, you know, I offered Skip that, and Skip, you know, Skip did a such and such offer you. Yeah, he did, but I didn't take it. How do we know you didn't take it? Okay. So that's what he should have done, Skip, or he should have started getting documentation. Okay. And to Hugh Jackson's point, he he talked yesterday on a podcast about how. That, that he laughs when when people say, well, why didn't you expose it when it was happening? Right. Hugh accusing Cleveland. Right. Of, Jimmy of similar. Jimmy you know, Hadler, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that you incentivized me. Right. right to lose games. Right. And, and he said, I laugh because these are high paying jobs and you, 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 you're just not going to do it. Right. You're not going to blow the whistle mm-hmm. in midstream while and you're in the middle of it. You're just not going to do it because no. you're a head coach or right. you're you're a. Not a high-paid assistant coach, yes. you're, you're not going to blow the whistle. Normally, Skip, what whistleblowers, it happens when they've been removed or they feel they've been punished outside of the scope of what should have happened. Yeah. So now, I'm okay, you're going to fire me? You're going to do this? You're going to demote me? Okay, this is what I'm going to do. Boom, the big tobacco. It was a, it was a, it was a whistleblower was inside a whistleblower. Yep. because they did something, and so now we're going to come forward. Mm-hmm. And that's normally what happened. Well, Hugh hadn't lost his job. Brian Flores hadn't lost his job at the mm-hmm. time. So there's no reason for me to come forward. And by the way, Hugh made it clear yesterday, he's now the coach at Grambling, Grambling. Yeah. that he has no designs on getting back in the NFL. Right. So what Brian Flores did was 
all time courageous because not only does he want to get back in the NFL, right. he wants to be a head coach, and he seemed like one of the top candidates right. until this happened. He might have to be. He might be a head coach, but he might have to go the college route. He might Skip, have it's kind of like if you sue a financial institution, you might can't work. I don't know how you work in that industry again. You might go to tech. You might go, you know, gas and oil and gas, but I don't know how you get back in that. OK, well, I got I it. So now Hugh Jackson indicated a day ago he might join the lawsuit, right. which is what Brian was hoping a lot of assistant Other coaches enough. or others would come along. But how, Skip, if you want to get a head coach? And OK, you, I, I got you it. You're going to kill my career before it even get started. I, I got it. So to your point, you want to talk about trying to climb a mountain? He's trying now to climb Mount Everest with no Sherpas. There, no, there, no, with no guys. You, alone, no. Right? you are all alone and you don't even have any cold weather gear on. No. You, you're, you're virtually, so to speak, naked against the world. Correct. Like it's just you yeah. trying to climb straight up. Yeah, he's right? trying to go Everest. Right. And okay. he's not Hillary and he doesn't have no, notice. No, he, he, he doesn't. So. I told you the moment this lawsuit bombshell hit that he, he not only took on the league, he took on the most powerful men in the league because he blew the whistle on Bill Belichick, or at least he he exposed him. Mm -hmm. He broke a trust uh, for a coach cool. that he worked under for 20 years right. because he exposed the text message exchange yeah. indicating that the Giants interview was a sham interview because the text exchange indicated because Bill mixed it up and thought it was Brian Dayball that he was <laughs> and, texting and, uh, and it Brian was Brian Flores. Flores. Right. But it indicated to Brian Flores that Brian Dayball was already a made man. It was right. a done deal, right. and I'm going for what looked like to be a sham interview. Correct. Okay, so you took on Belichick. You took on the cornerstone New York football giants. Yes. And I'll get to this in one second. You took on your quarterback, John Elway, one of the greatest quarterbacks in the history and still a prominent figure in the league because he still oversees the operation Correct. in Denver, yes. right? Yes, yes. And then finally, you took on your owner, Stephen Ross. So, so it's like... I'll I'll take you all on. And now they are all firing back. Yeah. And, and it's not just some some little cursory response and statement. They are going into gory detail about where you were wrong about this. Right. And let's start with the Giants. Their statement says. Mr. Belichick does not speak for and has no affiliation with the Giants. Mr. Belichick's text exchange provides no insight into what actually transpired during our head coaching search. Right. Boom again. Right. Here we go. So they're firing straight back saying, how could you use that as a credible source, as a, an insight into what we were doing? Right. Well, do you, do you buy that? I, yeah. I don't know. Bill Belichick's pretty powerful, and Bill Belichick and, and we know he the has Giants. a relationship yes, with right. the Maros. Yes, uh, I don't necessarily know what the tissues are the fifty fifty co owner. Yep. but I tell you what, we can do. We can find out. We can see if there's any phone records. We can see if there's any well, email. We may have to get there. Hey, yeah. That's the problem, though, Skip. You get there if the okay. lawsuit can go forward. Okay. I'm not turning over that information without a lawsuit, without yep. a subpoena. Yep, I agree. And and then the Giants go on into that that they are so upset because they detail their timeline with him. And they say that John Mara first contacted Brian Flores right after he's fired, two days after he was fired, and said, we want you to be one of our primary candidates okay. here. And then that at Brian Flores' request, that the two of them had a Zoom call the next day to go deeper into his philosophy, his coaching philosophy. So okay. he had his first sort of interview, and it, it, this is supposed to be at his request with with John Mara, who's the the top guy, right? Right. right. Aren't they fifty one percent to forty nine? I don't know. Maybe it's fifty. I think, I think, I think it's fifty All fifty. Right. But okay. here's the thing, though, Skip, the general manager. Where is he from? Buffalo. Brian Dayball. Where is he from? Well, that was obvious. Yes. So could it be? Could it be? This was outside of the purview. Okay. If the general manager is doing the hiring of the coach, could John Mara not know? What had transpired? Because okay, at that point, the GM had not been hired. So then they hired the Buffalo assistant GM, GM to be the GM. Correct. And then they have him have dinner with Brian Flores. Right. That was the night before this, this interview that was supposed to be a sham. Right. And so the Giants conclude that no decision was made, no job offer was extended until the evening of January 28th. 
a full day after Mr. Flores in-person interview and a day long visit to the Giants. So so they're saying it took 24 more hours before they chose Dayball. And yet three days before that interview, Belichick's texting, thinking it's Brian Dayball. Congratulations, so, you got the so job. Why would, so why would Coach Belichick think Brian Dayball is going to get the job if he doesn't have information that's only pervy to a handful of people? I, I can't say, well, you know what? You know who I think going to be? The number three guy here at Fox? I don't know. Now, I would know if I have pertinent information, then I can say that. For him, for Coach Belichick to say, even if he said, I think, how would you think that? So of all the candidates they're interviewing, Brian Dayball, Brian Flores, I'm sure I think Leslie Frazier interview, they probably interviewed five. Of all, he didn't say Frazier. He didn't say anybody else. He said, I think Brian Dayball is going to get that. He job. did. So... <sighs> I'm on Brian Flores' side there, and I'm having right. to try this in the court of public opinion right. again. Right. But everything that Brian accused through Belichick's text rang true to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm with that. Now, again, is there any law? in the NFL against sham interviews because <laughs> no, by, by the very <laughs> definition of the Rooney rule, if you just say you have to interview two outside candidates, well, obviously they're going to say, Occasionally, Come on in here, let's yeah, get this over okay, with. Let's get this over with, right? <laughs> because how can you, exactly. it's like the essence of the rule is, yeah. well, we got to we gotta observe the rules, yes. so let's have a quote-unquote sham yes. interview. And again, what I always loved about the Rooney, Rooney rule from the start was that at least because these things get widely reported that so-and-so was in for an interview, at least it puts so-and-so on the map right. as a, a head coaching candidate, uh, unfortunately in Eric Bieniemy's instance, He's had so many sham interviews that after a while it disqualifies him because everybody's saying, well, if nobody wants him, why should we want him, exactly. right? Exactly. We don't want somebody who's been picked over and and, right. and, and dismissed how many times. In this hard cycle, I don't even think he got it. Did he get an interview? He, 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 he's supposed to get one now. We're going to talk about this later in New Orleans. They're, oh. they're, they announced last night, I think later yesterday afternoon. Well, we're going to bring in Eric Bieniemy for the weirdest job on the market right now because I still have this idea that it's Sean Payne. Peyton's job to return to if he chooses. Right. He's still under contract for, what, three more years. Right, or you got Dennis Allen on staff who's done a great job, who's been there. And, who, and, and kinda, you would think that that's close to slam dunk, right? Right. right. Because he has been a head coach before yes. and did well this year mm -hmm. in w without Sean Payton, Correct. obviously. Okay, now let's go to your man, John Elway. He really fired back. Yes. Hard with mm -hmm. detail. And John's first quote was in his statement was, while I was not planning to respond publicly to the false and defamatory claims by Brian Flores, mm -hmm. I could not be silent any longer with my character, integrity, and professionalism being attacked. Right. Whew. Because if I can just characterize Brian's assertions about that early morning interview. Right. He said they were late as a te the Denver team mm -hmm. and, and that John and, and uh, uh, Joe, Ellis. Joe Ellis looked disheveled as if they had been out drinking much of the night. Right. And John's point was, he said, for Brian to make an assumption about my appearance and state of mind early that morning was subjective, hurtful and just plain wrong. It appeared, I'm sorry, if I appeared disheveled, as he claimed, it was because we had flown in during the middle of the night, immediately following another interview in Denver, and were going on a few hours of sleep to meet the only window provided us. So John's saying that Brian said, this, this is the only time I can meet, and for some reason it was in Providence, Rhode right. Island. Okay, so I'm not Which sure about Which is not sure, but I mean... That's where, that's where we normally stay. Skip, when we played, a lot of times we would fly in. The Cowboys always stayed in, in Providence. Okay, so okay. You, you, you know exactly it, what I'm talking about. It's about a, I don't know, 30, 40, 40 minute ride. Mm -hmm. bus ride up. Right. Okay. So he might he might have lived in Providence. He, he might, you know what? I'm, I'm going to guess that was it. So John's saying, we were trying to work with his schedule. Right. We provided a window. We flew all night. So again, I'm just trying to, trying to be fair right. to both sides right. here by giving his side of the story. Right. And so then John goes on to say, we took detailed notes, analysis, evaluation, and that we were completely open-minded that I interviewed Brian in good faith. Right. Okay, that one was a little more out there for me. And 
I'm, I, I would have to court a public opinion. I would have to lean a little more toward John there right. because it, it, it was a personal attack on the part of Brian. Right, because he's making it seem as if the, the appearance and the tardiness it, was the reason why he did, he doesn't feel like he got a fair shot. Yes. He said, because if you were taking this serious, you'd have been on time and you would have been, <laughs> I guess you'd have, your hair would have been, you know, you, Whatever, you'd have been impeccable. Yeah. Yes. So I guess that's the way he's looking at it, Skip. I, Skip, I can't tell somebody how they should feel. I mean, I've had interviews when people have had on shorts. I've had interviews with people been buttoned up, had a shirt and tie on. Yep. Hey, I just feel that I'm going in there and I'm, I'm put the best foot forward and I, we'll see what happens. Okay. And then obviously Jimmy Haslam, the owner in Cleveland, fired back hard. Oh, he fired back hard too. Ooh. See, I, I like statements like this here. At, at Hugh Jackson, go ahead. I like statements like this. All right. Because he's like, hold on, bro. I, I've accepted responsibility. Yes. I was bad. Yep. But at what point in time are you going to accept some culpability in your play, in your in, in how you coach the team and the team's record? Look, like I said, I, I, I wish there was, I, I, like I said, I wish there was a way that we could get around and everybody actually got a fair shot. Yep. But Skip, it is so subjective. For, I might not be looking for what you have to offer. Yep. Does that mean that I'm not giving you a fair chance because you're black? Or I just think, because that's all, they, Skip, they're going to always lean. I went with the guy that I thought was best qualified for the job, that best fit. The Cowboys yep. or the Broncos or the Dolphins or the Giants situation yep. at that particular time. How do you say what well, that's Denver wrong? Denver says it interviewed 10 candidates mm -hmm. and it chose Nathaniel Hackett, which I told you it was just out of the blue to right. me. But he does have a pretty deep connection to mm -hmm. one Aaron Rodgers. Aaron has backed him, has endorsed yeah. him, has said he was ready to be a head coach, and he can command the room in Green Bay. And it seems like if you're a Sean McVay protege yes. or a Kyle Shanahan protege, you got a shot. You are extremely, man. extremely, mm -hmm. or you're off that tree. Yes. You look at Stefanski, you look at Zach Taylor, you look at McVay, you look yeah. at Lafleur, Skip, you look at all these guys. I agree. Oh, McCall, Connell, and all. It seems to be that's what that's the tree that they're okay. picking all the coaches from. So allow me to sum this up with my point of view on this. Why have we seen so many more black quarterbacks over the last 20 years? Because they succeeded. Right. They got their shots, some of them not, not great situations, right. and they made the most of it. Right. Doug Williams broke through in 1987, yeah. 87. 80, yeah, 87, and won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, the floodgates started open because it's just a copycat league. Yes. All they want to do is win. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it's like, well, if, if that black quarterback can do it, maybe I should get a black quarterback. Yes. And all of a sudden, we see a, a pretty good representation oh, of absolutely. black quarterbacks, yes. right? Yes. Okay, so to me, we, we keep saying this thing's unfixable because you can't legislate, you, you can't mandate that a white owner choose a black head right. coach. But if one does, if you get your foot in the door, and right now we only have one left standing, yeah. it's such a copycat league. I just say if if somebody would give Brian Flores a shot and he goes and wins the Super Bowl, well, then what do you think would happen? Well, the rest of them would say, hey. Well, hell, Tony Dungy that? did it. Lovey Smith well, got well, to the Super Bowl. Unfortunately, they, they did it against each other. Right. So it was like, <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> you know, like one had to lose and one had to win. But Mike Tomlin has yep. 15 consecutive seasons in which yep. he has a non-losing record. He it's that don't that don't that, 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 that don't seem to mean anything. Resonate. But, yep. but Skip, you said the black quarterback. It was when they started giving the black quarterback the same opportunity yep. that they gave the white quarterback. I, I agree. That he was able to succeed. I agree. When you start bringing him in, well, he can't play because he ran this, and they say, like, "Hold on, wait a minute." The guy played quarterback his whole life. Why all of a sudden we got to move him to wide receiver? And I think the biggest thing is when Lamar Jackson said, nah, I'm a quarterback. Lamar Jackson and his mom said, nah, he played quarterback. He ain't moving no wide receiver. He's not running no wide receiver drills. He's not being a running and back. And then what did he do? He won the MVP. He won the MVP. Cam Newton, MVP. Yeah. Okay. So it, you're right, Skip. But you got to give them the same opportunities you just have now. To give That's them. what you got to do. And you keep making the point. Every time they get an opportunity, it's without a quarterback. Yeah. Bottom of the barrel. And, and it's like... It, it, it's it's ill fated to lose already. Yeah, how, how was Skip? If if it if it was so easy, Coach Belichick got six Super Bowls. He should have got two or three of them in Cleveland before he got Brady. If it was that simple, if you could do, if you're such a great coach, what Hall of Fame coach? You got to go back to maybe Joe. I think Joe Gibbs and Coach Parcells yeah. are the only two head coaches off the top of my head, Skip. Okay. that's in the Hall of Fame. Sure. They didn't have Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Good point. What's it in perspective? Yep. <laughs> okay. You're not winning without that guy. No mercy.
Reggie Jackson hit the game winner for the Clippers in their 111-110 win over the LeBron-less Lakers last night. And while the shot drops, the purple and gold to three games below 500, the King actually took to Twitter to give Jackson props on the shot, writing, quote, great game, Mr. October with a big time shot to end it. Salute. Laker Nation took some offense to LeBron congratulating the opposition with one fan even replying, Kobe would never do that bleep. Have some Laker pride. I just don't know about this. Know. Shannon, did you have a problem with what Shannon. LeBron tweeted? I don't have a problem with it. You don't? No, because we know, Skip, this is what we know about LeBron. LeBron loves good play, be it from his team or someone else. LeBron has never been a hater. That's one thing you'll always be able to say about LeBron. It doesn't matter if it's Kevin Durant. It doesn't matter if it's Steph Curry. It doesn't matter if it's a, a, a lower, uh, a second-tier guy. If you play well, LeBron is gonna LeBron is gonna compliment you. That's just who he is. And because Kobe, we gotta stop thinking. Because Kobe or George or this guy wouldn't do that, that doesn't make it the end all be all. Okay, Kobe had a way of doing things. That's not the way LeBron did it. LeBron has a way of doing things. That's not the way KD does it. That's okay. At the end of the day, LeBron also like he was proud of his guys. A tough night of a back to back. Hey, congratulations, guys. Man, mm. LeBron appreciates great basketball. Sure, I'm sure he liked to put out a lot of that great basketball to come from his team, his teammates. But when it doesn't, it's okay to compliment the other guys. Now, me? No, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have given uh, um, Reggie Jackson. But that's LeBron. And having followed him as much as I have, I'm not surprised because I've seen him do it time and time again. This is who he is. And Laker Nation, you've never fully embraced LeBron? Nope. That's okay. Mm -hmm. He's accepted that. He knows he's never because he's coming in on the tail end of his career. Even though he's delivered a championship, he knows he's not going to be considered one of those Pantheon Laker greats like Kobe, like Shaq. Magic, Kareem, Worthy, all those great. He understands that, and I believe he's at peace with that. He understood that the moment he signed on, man, it's 15 years, you know, I'm 15 years deep. I ain't gonna be, I ain't gonna be Kobe. I ain't gonna be all that. So he's good with that, Skip. But I don't, I don't, look, I still got a big, bigger problem, but I wanna hear your point. I got a lot of points. I know you got, I know you got a problem with everything. The mere fact that he got a Twitter account, you upset with that. Okay, so on TNT, and this was the late game on TNT, just as the game was about to start, Allie, excuse me, Ali LaForce reported that LeBron was off-site getting treatment for his swelling knee. Mm -hmm. That just seemed a little odd to me. I don't know. Off-site, usually you'd go to the arena to get treatment. Would you be Hugh home? <laughs> it, it sounds like he might have been at home. So I told you at the top of the show is it possible LeBron had a third glass of wine and he wasn't quite in his right mind? Yeah, he was in his right mind. And, and is it possible that I hark back to the, the classic words of one Herman Edwards, friend of mine back in the day at ESPN, remember when he said, don't no hit it. sin. Yeah. Just don't hit sin. <laughs> Think about it and don't hit sin. Right. What have I always said about LeBron? He suffers from ADD, as in attention deficit disorder, as in, I got to be the center of attention, and last night I was not because I wasn't even at a home game. Mm -hmm. I'll give you that. Paul George was there. Kawhi wasn't. So I'm going to give you that one. Mm -hmm. Kawhi may have been getting treatment on his rehabbing knee. Right. But the point was that, incredibly to me, that LeBron was completely out of the story, and then as soon as the game ended, he made himself the story of the night – because he just can't help himself, and he did so for all the wrong reasons. And, and I get you, he wants to always be Mr. Nice Guy and a good sport and, and, a, and a good loser. And so he's saying congratulations to Reggie Jackson, right. Mr. October. But if LeBron had played in the game, I promise you he wouldn't have gone no. home and tweeted congratulations. Right. Right. Because he's basically reminding everybody, I wasn't there. Right. right? But, but Skip, we know who the reference of Mr. October actually is. It's the other Reggie Jackson. But he happens to have that name. <laughs> well, last year he was kind of Mr. May, right? Yeah. Because he made he, a he, bunch he, of big shots oh, in the man, playoffs. He was, he, was, he was sensational, especially against Utah. Okay, so 
to your point, and I'm going to reread what Jenny read, but these are a couple of LeBron's followers. And the, the first one, I'm just going to repeat this. Kobe would have never, I'm sorry, would never do that SH. Have some Laker pride. Well, that indicates to me, small sample size, but, but I'm with you. I'm not sure Laker Nation ever completely no. embraced LeBron, even after the bubble championship. Nope. It, it's just, he, he ain't Kobe. No. And, and he's not going to be Kobe in their eyes ever, ever, ever. No. Nobody, nobody. Because, Skip, Kobe came here at 17. We didn't get you. We, you didn't come. You came here as a 30, a 33-year-old grown man. Kobe came to us as a 17-year-old kid. Kobe, Kobe couldn't get in the club. He was eating ice cream at, at McDonald's just like the rest of them. That when is the machine correct. worked. That is correct. And then another LeBron follower tweets, WTF. LeBron giving props to the Clips? Aw, oh, hell no. Nah. I'm going to bed. This world is upside down now. <laughs> well, it felt upside right. down to me when I saw it this morning. I don't follow LeBron, but I said, w w why are you doing that after your team roared back? They were down 17 with four minutes left in the third quarter, and they go on a 43-25 to 25 run. That's, that's pretty yeah. good. Yes. And it, it was ignited by one Russell Westbrook. Mm -hmm. he, in the fourth quarter, he was just flat-out sensational. Mm -hmm. And then it came down to a, an ill-fated play at the end featuring Mr. October, right? Yes. And we'll get to that. But, but allow me to show you, because we usually do our daily blooper reel for <laughs> Russell Westbrook. So in honor of his fourth quarter last night, in which he made five of nine shots, I would like to show you good Russ, mm -hmm. OKC Russ, if you will, because he made five nice shots that were all important. There's the driving layup. That cut it only to eight. And then he pulls up. OK, nice. And there's an and one. He didn't make the end one, but that cut it to six. Mm -hmm. and then here we go again. A little fall away off the glass. That's sweet. He, those don't often work, but that one worked. That cut it to four. And then here's the big shot. That was the one where I said, oh, they got a shot. Now that's 223 yep. left. That cut it to four. And then this one gave the lead. That's the lead from the baseline. I didn't think he'd make that shot. That's 103 left. He makes it. And all of a sudden, they're up one. OK, so now we have another play that was a sweet play by Russ, but it was an assist play. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have he only had two assists in the fourth quarter. But but still. If we can see the alley-oop pass, it was a good pass. It usually he throws those out of bounds, yes. right, to AD. Or throws them too short and the guy picks it off. <laughs> Either way. That was on target, right. on time, right. nice rhythm. Great out of the, great, uh, out of the timeout Out of the call. timeout, mm -hmm. and that's 12.5 seconds left, and all of a sudden they're back up one. Which leads to the last play for the Lakers on defense. And I don't know what happened to Russell Westbrook, but, but he just drifts off into Thank Never Never you. Land. What the hell is he? I don't know. Because here we go with Mr. October. Ooh, he's high stepping. He's, he won, he's, won, he's, he's won, won, he's won. Now go, Russ. Russ, Russ, Russ is yeah. your guy. No, and, and Austin Reeves, the kid from if Oklahoma, he, he, at least he cut him off on the baseline, but he couldn't stop the spin. But here's the thing, Skip. We got him trapped. You got him All trapped. you got to do, where's Russ going? The angle at which he's going, he's like, like he thinks Reggie Jackson is going to the baseline to shoot a jumper. Okay. No, you can't let him spin. No, you agreed. can't let him split the double team. He split the double team because Russ didn't really no. give much effort no, to he, double. He, he, he hopping like Reggie Jackson was coming up the court. <laughs> and then he's reaching. Skip, the prime example. You remember last year in the NBA Finals, Devin Booker got the switch and he backed on the guy and true and holiday went now for the double he team did. he took, took the ball out of hand. All away. Russ had to do was close the distance. Reggie Jackson is gonna spin back. Just take the ball from him. I Reggie agree. Jackson's gonna spin back and go hand you the ball on a silver platter. Didn't get there. Didn't get there. This is four seconds left, so if you make a play here, you're gonna win the game. Where is he going? You got to you skip. It's like a double team block in football. You gotta be close or the guy's gonna split the double team. And and Reggie is his guy to start yes. with. You, you, you got to, as you say, you got to sit down in the chair on that one. Just four seconds left. You got to make a stop. He plays little to no defense, and it bit him in the butt again. But that's, isn't that the Lakers? Skip, you got a two-point lead. The one thing you can't do is give up is what? A three. What do they do? Trevor, I don't know where Trevor Reed is going. And now he gives up a three. And everybody knows, normally when guys get the ball out of a scramble, yep. they're going to gather their feet. So they're going to pump you up to get their feet. They're just not going to just rise up and shoot yep. because there's the, the, uh, the clock is still in their favor. It's not like the shot, a shot clock violation. Yep. So he's going to gather his feet. He pumps Reza up. 
Yeah. Re- gathers himself. He had it going from three last night. He I did. think he was six or seven from the three point line. And he switches a three. And I'm like, oh, here we go again. But the skip, that's been the Lakers' MO defense and free throws. They missed another eight last night. Mm-hmm. Okay, although <laughs> if you look at your box, they were able to make 17. L- look at the Clippers. They only shot 11 total and made six. So you won the free throw line 11 by, by plus 11. See? Yeah. And you but, lost the game but skip, by one. But, they shot 52%. They shot 52% from the floor. They, would get, they, 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 they need to get fired. They don't need get, to go to the free throw line. Want. Yeah, and 43% from the three. Because at one point in time, Skip, they couldn't miss from three. Okay, so Anthony Davis, your man, he's, I he's bottle rejuvenated. That up. I want to bottle that up. Okay, what so, I've been seeing the last four games, I want to okay, bottle that. 30 points, 17 rebounds, but even better was seven offensive, offensive rebounds, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, AD had the ball in his hands, as he should have, for the last shot. If we could see it, please. On uh, the run, on the run, on the run. That's Skip, a th- hard shot. Skip, I thought, it was, I thought it was good. Well, he, was- he said it did everything but go in, and I, I'm not sure about that. He shot it a little flat and a little hard because it's hard to he, it's hard to gather. Yeah, it's you, hard you, to gauge it because you're going to the basket. And you're the- going full speed for yeah. him. Yeah. He, that's his full speed, yeah. right? And he's 6'10", you yes. know, so it's hard to – to shoot this with a lot of time. The only guys that I trust shooting a shot like that yep. are the three guys. Trey Young, yeah. who's the master of yeah. the floater, okay. James, James Harden, Harden, and Steph Curry. Okay, I'll buy that. I agree. <laughs> so it came down to that, and right. it didn't work, and you lost. So here's why Laker Nation was so upset with LeBron. Because they are aware of the fact that the Clippers are still a rival. And you say, you talk about the team in the basement. But the stats that came glaringly obvious to me last night, would you believe in the last 37 games between the Lakers and Clippers, the Clippers have won 30 games? They're 30-7 and seven in the last 37 games against your Lakers. Mm-hmm. You don't think that sticks in the craw of Laker Nation? That's why they don't want him tweeting congratulations mm-hmm. to Mr. October. But guess what? It shouldn't even be that. I got Anthony Davis and I got Russell Westbrook. Okay. They don't have Paul George. I, I they don't agree. have it Kawhi. Boiled down to that I cannot night. lose you this game. You can't lose that game. And it came down to one team has Ty Lewitt coach and your team has Frank Vogel. I'm sorry. It boils down that, to that to me because Ty Lue is my coach of the year because he's making miracles with yes. that team without yes. his two stars. I, I believe we'd have, we'd have another title. If, well, the injuries. But Ty Lue, I do. I, believe, I agree with you. Ty Lue is a better coach than Frank Vogel. That is as simple as that. And the guys play hard. See, a game like that, Skip, the Lakers, I've seen Lakers have big leads like that and lose the lead and lose the game. Yeah. Ty Lue team had a big lead, lost the lead, but didn't lose their composure, and they won the game. And as you know, three times this year, they've come from hopelessly behind. 24 points or more. Whew, to win three games. And to barely stay afloat. They're not much better right. than the Lakers, but they're a little better just because their coach is better. Skip, I was told, everybody was saying, if one of the big three needed a break, the other two could carry the team. This is an opportunity LeBron, that uh, Anthony Davis and Russell Westbrook have to carry it. LeBron and AD has to carry it if Russell is out. LeBron and Russ needs to carry it if AD's out. They have not been good enough this year. And normally games come down to what are you? Defense. We've been talking about defense all year. The game, you couldn't get one stop. You couldn't get one. Free throws. Front end, you have a, a, a and one, and you miss it. Miss it. That's the difference. You, you won't guard the three-point line to save your life. Mm. You're the three-point line. Man, you're the three-point line. I can't go over there. Maybe alligators in the water or something. Yep. Man, guard the three-point line. So, Shannon, think about this. It's bad enough for Laker Nation to see a team that's now three games under 500 as we approach trade deadline and all-star break. Mm-hmm. But your team, the Los Angeles Lakers, have lost the last five to the team in the basement. Yeah. That's why Laker Nation said, stop it, LeBron. Not tonight. Don't do it to us tonight. Don't congratulate the Clippers. That's yeah. what they're saying. Yeah, I'm picking. Yeah, I, I mean, Skip, that's me. I wouldn't do it. No, because I understand. I mean, I like Mahone. I ain't congratulate Mahone <laughs> when he played the Broncos. Uh, no, no, no. That would be <laughs> that ain't happening. Odd. It's a little odd, but all right. I, I appreciate both sides of that discussion. <laughs> uh, speaking of Skip's guy, Micah Parsons, well, he is in Las Whoa. Vegas for the Pro Bowl. 
And the rookie defensive star won the fastest man race over teammate Trayvon Diggs, Browns running back Nick Chubb, and Chiefs speedster Tyreek Hill, who, you know, didn't appear to be giving it his all because we all know just how fast that guy is. So, Shannon, scale of 1 to 10, how impressive was this? Come a on. One. A what one? You, you got to give him more than Skip. a one. What? You know good and well Tyreek Hill was not running. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what so he was bad. doing. He got a sweatshirt, sweatpants. Everybody else died on the stands and he's standing. <laughs> I, like he's, but, I, I think he slipped off the line a little bit, but he didn't try at all. No, he didn't. Give you that. He, he did not. Yeah. We, we know what Tyreek is. Tyreek has track speed as a football player. Now, I'm going to give Michael Parsons credit for beating Nick Chubb and Stephon Diggs. And by the way, he said that Chubb personally challenged him before the race. Right. I got you. Right. I'm, I'm going to humiliate you, and yeah. that did not happen. No. Uh, Parsons, the, the, the guy timed it 439. So, I mean, I don't know why people think he's like some big slow slug. The guy ran 439 coming out. So, obviously, he has elite speed. But he's listed at 245, and yeah. he looks like he's, he's starting to get his man body. He's probably 255. I think the thing, but here's the thing, Skip. You got to understand, here's a guy that, I mean, when you go into the combine, you're at your peak condition. The guy just had a 18-week season. So it's not like he's been, yeah, you've been sprinting, but you ain't been trying to run like that. I'm surprised he ran like that and then pulled something. He ain't had to run that fast in a very, very long, he hadn't had to run that fast at least a month, because I think the season's been over, what, three weeks now. Yeah. So it's been a while since he's had to run that fast. But he may he may miss me to uh, step uh, uh, of Diggs, a trade by Diggs. And, and Diggs time four four two at the combine. Yeah, four four two. I'm not sure Trevon tried hard either. <laughs> yeah, because he was laughing the whole yeah, way. Yeah, because I think the, I think the race between the two guys right next to each other. It was those like two. okay, you guys going back and forth because clearly they had been trash talking before the race actually started. That is correct. So everybody else like okay, it's between y'all two. Y'all have at it. Okay, just for the record, Chubb timed four five two at the combine. Yeah. Four five two at two twenty seven. Right. So Micah, to your point, did time four three nine at two four five. Right. Okay. So he weighs, I don't know, 20-ish pounds more. Yeah. But he was already faster the, the by clock be, times. Yes. Okay, so yeah. we, we knew that. But now you got to back it up because right. you got to do it on cue right. head-to-head with him. Yes. For the record, last night in Las Vegas, they got hit by that same cold spell that yeah. everybody else is under. So it was like... 45 degrees right. with a wind chill in the 20s. Yeah, because I was looking, I was like, well, damn, why is everybody in hoodies and sweats and everything? And then yeah. I it, saw the wind, the wind was blowing out like crazy. And so Tyreek wanted no part of trying to run in 20 degree wind nah, chill. Not with them hamstrings. With, with those hamstrings <laughs> yeah. because it's too dangerous. Yes. It's not worth it. No. I don't know if they got compensated for participating. Oh, yeah, they, they did. I'm, I'm sure they, they did, did. But, but I guess Tyreek decided, well, all I got to do is show up to get my money. You know, 20, just stand skip, at the there's line. There's a difference between 21-year-old hamstrings and 28, 29-year-old hamstrings. No doubt. When you, when you a track guy. No doubt, especially in those weather <laughs> yes, conditions. Yes, yes. Because that's like Arrowhead in January yes, kind of you're condition, asking for right? trouble. Okay. But here's the point. Here's my takeaway. And you know how much I love me some 11 from heaven. Yes, you do. He changed my life. He, he changed the way my team played football. I thought... For much of the year, he was making the case that he was the defensive player of the year, mm-hmm. not just the defensive rookie of the year. Mm-hmm. And yet, when I saw this last night, 250-odd pounds, in that kind of motion, if we could see it one more time, Shannon, he can flat flop. Yeah, he can run, yeah. Look, look at the. I mean, this is like next level. This is, look, once he gets uncorked, he is flying. <laughs> yeah. He is flying. Yeah. And I told you. To my eye, I haven't ever seen that kind of closing speed mm-hmm. from an edge rusher. I know Von Miller has quickness yes. and speed yes. to him, and mm-hmm. we can go back to the great Lawrence Taylor. But I'm talking about explosive close on a quarterback. When, when he got loose from his block yeah. and closed on the quarterback, it happened so fast. Remember Justin Herbert in game yeah. number two? He's mm-hmm. like, whoa, I, I, don't, I can't even get rid of the ball. He's right. all over me before right. I know what hit me. Mm-hmm. Remember Taysom Hill on Thursday yeah. night? All of a sudden – before he could even get his head upfield to find somebody or find a place to get rid of the football and throw it away, right. Micah's all over him, just suffocates him and takes him down to the ground. Mm-hmm. Well, that was some rare combination of size and speed that I saw on display because he took it seriously because Chubb took it seriously. Exactly. We got a little footage with Tyreek Race and Miko Hardman. Miko Hardman came out of University of Georgia. Yeah. He ran 4-3-3. Now, this is Tim and Tyreek. In the offseason, they're racing. 
Now, Nicole Harmon is 4-3-3. Yep. Now, this is Tyreek taking it serious. <laughs> and he pulls up. We got another play. Do we, uh, did, that's, that's Tyreek taking it serious. That's, that's some rare, raw speed. Okay, Skip, this is Tyreek against 22 man. I oh, know. Catching the override. Okay, this is Tyreek taking it serious. Look how he's running out from up. He's pissing people out in the 20 yard line. We should have been a flag of sports like <laughs> <Yeah>. conduct. <laughs> Tyreek, Tyreek from Georgia. Tyreek ran 20.94 in the 200 meters. Anybody that can rub sub 21 in 200 meters, legit can run. So he got asked right before the race, yeah. are you the fastest man in the league? And he said, no, I'm the fastest man in the world. Yeah. And, and I, he believes it and it makes me believe it. If, I don't, I don't he, know. He would, he would need to train yes. because at that level, Skip, it's all about to get out. If he were to train. I agree. I still believe Tyreek. Tyreek's probably still one of the few guys that can still probably run 4-2 in the 40, even at, at well, I think this is what, year, year eight for Tyreek, seven yep, or eight for yep. Tyreek. I still have, think he has that kind of speed. But for a man that's Michael Parsons' size to be able to un, unfurl himself. He unfurled. And then he, that, he that's just legit, unleashed. That, that's, the Cowboys didn't really, and I told you, Skip, I said, <laughs> Skip, the, he, he's special. You watch him. You just hope, Skip. When I go, if I were to go, if I was a scout, I, obviously I watched the guy on tape. Now I get a chance to see him up close and personal. I said, man, this kid looked like he was fast. He played really fast. I look at my stopwatch, four three nine. He is fast, man. He looked like he's explosive. I watch him vertical. I watch him standing broad jump. He's explosive. I want to see what kind of closing speed. I watch his short shuttle. I'm mm. good. Well, you were good before the draft. I'm good, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. You saw him coming before yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you see him, once you see him in the game, and you watch his measurables, I, I don't need to see anything else. I don't care what he said. I don't, need, I don't need to do no no in person interview. I don't need any of that. Well, I needed a quarterback, <laughs> so I wanted Patrick Sertan. Yeah. Your team snatched him right out from under my nose. Yes. And all of a sudden, Jerry Jones actually traded back a yeah. slot. Yes. Two two slots. Yes. To take. Micah Parsons at 12, and I wasn't unhappy with that. I was only unhappy because I didn't get my bookend Bama corner right. to go with Trevon Diggs. Right. And I think Patrick Sertan is a little better all-around cornerback than Trevon Diggs yeah, just yeah, because yeah. You, you can trust him more from yes. play to play. Yes. He, he's not going to clue. He's no, not, not going to gamble. Feast, he's not right. feast or famine. No, he's not feast or famine, and Diggs is. Speed-wise, maybe they're in the same ballpark, right. but – and, and instincts wise, receiver hands wise, I'll no, take this. Yeah. Okay, but Patrick Sertan just flat out knows how his father was a mm -hmm. very good mm -hmm. corner. So he's got the right bloodlines, he's got the right mentality, mm -hmm. and you can trust you're going to have a Pro Bowl corner yeah. for a long time right. to come. Mm -hmm. But this kid yeah. changed life. Yes. And I didn't see this because he opted out. So I'd seen bits and pieces, flashes on my screen from the previous, from the previous year at Penn State. Yeah, he won the Buckers. He won the Buckers. So he. And he I, he was he, he was smart to opt out. So did Jamar Chase. Yeah. But Skip, the, the guy, when you watch him and you look at him, you're like, dang, he looks the part. Can he play? Yeah, he for real. And yet I had and the Cowboys did not Skip. They, the Cowboys okay. didn't realize he was going to be there. They had no idea. Ain't no way because you couldn't run the risk. Trade him back. Why would I run the risk? And Skip, because you moved you moved back from I think ten to twelve. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have came up at eleven and got him. Well, they traded. They with traded with the Philly. Philly. Yeah, I think Philly was at twelve. Okay, but they Philly g promised, guaranteed, and you can't break your word on right. these draft no, no, no. night deals. But guess what? They were going to take uh, Devontae Smith. Smith. Yeah, but ten, twelve. There's eleven. I ain't, you ain't make no. You ain't make no guarantee with the team that's sitting at eleven that they wouldn't take it. Okay. So you you you, you, you were just defaulting. You, you're just going. Okay, who's next on our board? Right. We need a defense player. Let's take that. And you guy. probably you looking at Skip also so well. Well, they don't they don't need. I mean, we want the guy, but do they? I don't think they. I don't think they need the guy. I don't even know who who was eleven. Skip. Yeah. Well, they, they don't need a linebacker, so they're not going to take him. Mm -hmm. So you feel very comfortable making a switch with giving up what you gave up to let, let them move up to take Devontae Smith. And guess what? You got another, you got extra draft pick. Okay. And yet I had two scouts that I've known forever. <laughs> Tell me, you got to be careful with Micah. He's really full of himself. Well, he's full of himself because yeah. he can back it up. Right. 
<laughs> Skip, I think a lot of people soured on him. He's a young man. Yep. He made some mistakes mm-hmm. in college. He did. Like a lot of young people do. Yep. It just so happens that he's a, a collegiate football player, and it get, it gets he's up on a microphone, a microscope, as opposed to, say, somebody that's majoring in lit- literature or majoring in bio- uh, biology or something like that. Yep. The mistakes that they make is not going to get highlighted like a college athlete. So he made some mistakes. He's young. Um, but I think he learned from those, and I think that might have scared some people off. But his talent is undeniable. And yet, Dan Quinn did drive me crazy because I didn't think he <laughs> utilized that talent enough as just a pure pass rusher. If you you want him to rush every down. Okay, well, I do. And he's <laughs> not he, hes not a huge man, obviously, compared to other people who are rushing. Right. But they'll line him up over the center stand-up. Right. They'll have him stand up yeah. right over the center. Right. And, and yet... You realize, I think it was up to 20, I think he played 25 snaps at what Pro Football Focus concluded was cornerback. Mm-hmm. At cor- you, you played, well, you can see he can run. Right. And we, we, we kept showing plays of downfield plays uh-huh. that he made. Breaking up, Remember, yeah. breaking up plays oh, against steals. New Kenny Orleans. Steals. Kenny Stills, mm-hmm. yep. And there was another one down at the goal line on right. the Giants. Remember right. that? Mm-hmm. Well, he can do that, but he can rush the passer a lot better right. than he can do that. Right. So, I'm just thanking the man upstairs for giving us Micah Parsons. Oh, you, you, he's, a, he's a special talent. Yep. He's going to be special for a long period of time. Hopefully, I understand him being full of himself. Hopefully, he doesn't get caught up in the press clippings. Yeah, I agree. And he continues to put the work in because he has a chance to be really, no, he has a chance to be really, really special. Really, Von really special. Von Miller type I, special. I agree. T.J. Watt type special. He has a chance. Yeah. To help me overcome when in spite of, <laughs> but, please drop the Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones. Both well, of them. Well, Jerry seemed like he'd be wanting to drop the mic. I think Jerry go back and forth. Jer- Jerry's like Tom Brady in retirement. One, more, one morning he wakes up, I should fire Mike McCarthy. Wake up the next morning, nah, he's pretty good. I should the next, go, He going back and forth. Because in that same interview, he's like, Mike McCarthy knows one day he's not going to be the he coach of the that. Dallas Cowboys. Yep. Mike McCarthy, 58, Skip. He yeah. th- he's like, yeah, probably when I'm like 70, he ain't thinking about like 50 to have 60 in my job. My tenure might be up. No mercy. Well, despite Brian Flores' NFL lawsuit, the Texans and Saints are reportedly still considering him as a finalist for their coaching vacancy. Chiefs OC Eric Bieniemy is also getting an interview with New Orleans, but Buccaneers offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich pulled his name out of the running for the Jaguars job before the team ended up naming Doug Peterson as its head coach. So, Shannon, do you see Black Candidate getting any of the remaining coaching jobs right now? Well, it's not looking like it. Um... Skip, the, the Texans, Saints, and Dolphins still have c- coaching vacancies. It looks like Dennis Allen, Byron Leftwich, Lions, D.C., Aaron Glenn. If I had to lean one way, I would probably think Dennis Allen's going to get that job, although Aaron Glenn was a DB coach on Sean Payton's staff, left and went, became the D.C. at the Detroit Lions. Yep. The Texans, Josh McCrown, Brian Flores, and Eagles, uh, Jonathan Gannon. Mm-hmm. Skip, let this sink in for a second. I want people at home. Josh McCown, Josh McCown. Has two and has had two interviews. He's the leading candidate to be the Houston Texans head coach, and he was coaching high school last year. I just want people to do you believe? It, I want someone out there in your heart of hearts. Do you believe that a black high school coach could get an interview to be a head coach in the National Football League? Josh McCown got two, and right now he's at the front getting a Texans job. Mm. The Dolphins, it looks like Mike McDaniel and Kellen Moore. It's going to be interesting, Skip. I'm going to see, I'm gonna see if Jerry Jones is, if what Jerry Jones said is true. Kellen Moore gets this job. He turns it down to go back and be the head, the OC at Dallas. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see if Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, everybody want to be the head coach of the Dallas Cowboy. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what he says. So I'm going to see if, if, if uh, Stephen Ross offers this job to Kellen Moore. He's a Mr. Ross, I really appreciate it. It is a great honor. I would love to but right now, I think I'm better served being the, the, the offensive coordinator. So as we sit here, Skip, and they love to use the term finalist. Man, I would have had 100 black guys be the finalist only to not get the job. Nobody remembers the finalists. They only remember who got the prize. I re- in 1984, he was a finalist for the Oscar. Who won the Oscar? That's what they remember, not the finalists. Who actually got the award? Mm. So for me, Skip... It's not looking. It's not looking good. Um, Byron Leftwich took his name out of the running for and Jacksonville. I don't, I don't blame him a bit. And He's Dougie, got issues with Trent Balky. And Dougie mm-hmm. Pete. Mr. Mr. Khan, 
you keep doing the same thing and wonder why you keep getting the same results. You won't learn. So you went out there and you 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 got you you had to have Urban. Hey, they, we love him here. You had to have him. Trent Ball, you got him. Look what it got you. Now, at some point in time, you're gonna have to make a course of action if you truly, seriously want to win football games. Mm. Now, if you just want to collect the check, I mean, them three hundred fifty million dollar checks that come every year when the cap is only two hundred twenty million, hey, that's pretty good. Then you got a little merchandising and TV, local TV deal, so you, you sitting back. Now, if that's all you want. Keep doing it your way. But I can assure you, if you're in your outside businesses, if you have people in position mm-hmm. and they keep losing you money and you keep having to make changes, okay, you're like, hold on. Mm. You keep being in the same, you're in the same position. And I keep having to hire people up under you. What's going on with you? Mm. Long story short, Skip, I don't think a brother gonna get a job this year. And they had what, eight openings? Wasn't it nine to start? Maybe so nine. Shannon Sharp, I cannot disagree with you. This situation is screaming no, no, no. And what I know about these men that run this league, if you try to back them into a corner, they will come out swinging because they got power. Mm -hmm. They have stature. (laughs) They know people in high places, and they are fighting back in ways that shock me, just as Brian Flores' lawsuit shocked me. You said it's predictable, but I I didn't see them coming out swinging in the court of public opinion, and they are. Mm -hmm. So he took on the highest levels of the establishment, Belichick, Elway, Stephen Ross, all of them firing back, Jimmy Haslam firing back at Hugh. Mm -hmm. The upshot of this is going to be this league is going to say no to another black head coach. So Mike Tomlin, I believe, will still be the last man standing. Mm-hmm. And I want to reiterate the perspective of this. The NBA has 14 black head coaches out of 30. Out of 30. 14 out of 30. The NFL is about to be left with one of, of 32. 32. After a high in 2018, I believe it's just 2018, that they there were eight. Yeah. Eight's not enough. So is this lawsuit going to have enough teeth, uh, enough traction to get to the Supreme Court? And the Supreme Court is going to rule NFL. You must have 50 percent black head coaches because you have 70. What is it? 70, 71 percent, one percent players the the NBA has 83 percent of color. Mm -hmm. It's just of color. Okay, 71 percent versus 83, but still 71 percent of your players are of color. Mm -hmm. You have one out of 32. And will the Supreme Court ever dictate, ever legislate, ever say you have to have 50 percent? No, what Congress can do. Is say we're going to take your antitrust you exemption can do away unless you change your hiring practices. Mm-hmm. See, money is what impacts. When they when they thought they was going to lose, the advertisers started pulling out because the cap was doing what they was doing. Yeah, they they put down the gauntlet. That's what gets their attention. The only all that booing because they know you're going to still watch the game. Skip, <sighs> you're going to watch the game. You're going to go to the stadium. You going to you gonna, the, the, uh, the the ratings are still going to be off the charts. Mm-hmm. Hit them back pockets. Mm-hmm. Now you get their attention. Take that antitrust away, then they'll behave like they're supposed to. Now, that would be a development. <laughs> that would do it. I agree. I mean, because, you know, they, they, a couple of them in front of Congress right now dealing with the situation that's going on in D.C. That's all and another it's, and it's ball not, of wax. And it's not looking good. No. Now they want to revisit it. They do. Oh, hold on. You said everything was good. You was happy with the conclusion that your independent investigator come to. So why you want to, you, you know, why you might want to revisit it? Mm, because we got the tip of the iceberg, Exa- Gruden, right? Those texts. But there are a whole lot of other texts we don't know about. But what them ladies are testifying to and the men are testifying to, somebody gonna might have to go up in, in Washington, Skip. Okay, I got you. So now we're left with a Byron Leftwich who just had issues with the GM. Skip, you on the said, silver plate. Mm-hmm. The guy played for the organization. He did. He just won a Super Bowl calling plays. So what's the excuse? Because, Skip, you know, we want a guy to call plays. You got to call plays. But there are a lot of guys that's getting jobs, they ain't never called no play. So Byron called plays. What they going to say now? Well, you had Tom Brady, so how hard? 
There are a lot of guys. Bill O'Brien ain't won no Super Bowl calling plays. No. Mm. So now it seems like Gail Benson said, you know what? L- let's get Eric Bieniemy in here and, and give him an interview because yeah. he deserves an interview. Yeah. But it, that's what it feels like, another token interview yeah. at the end of the, the hiring cycle. Let's make sure he gets Kinda one Kind of like interview. Houston, Texas last year, where they didn't really have anybody in. And at the end, you know, they brought in, they gave, out of a kindness of their heart, they brought in EB, ended up hiring David Cully. Skip, Josh McCown. Skip, he ain't even the head coach. He ain't even the head coach. He ain't even yeah, the You mean in high school? In high school. Yeah, no. He's an assistant yeah. coach on his son's football team. Okay. And but I'm he happened sure. to be friends with uh, Jack Easterby, who's that, the BP. That is correct. And yet, I'm sure people laughed at me when I said, go get Deion Sanders at Jackson State. At least he's done it at Jackson State at a high level. And they were really good. They were there. 11-2 and two last yeah. year. You, you can't tell me that Deion wouldn't be better than Josh McCown. That's just me. Yeah, but... Uh, Dion need to go where Sammy Sosa went and the Dominican get some bleach and then come back and then maybe he'll have an opportunity to get that job. I don't think Dion's going to do that. (laughs) Well, he he ain't going to get that job then. All right, so let's go back to the the viable of the candidacy of Brian Flores is all he did was against all odds with a really bad football team his first year with an owner trying to incentivize him, right. according to him, right. he's alleging. If he's winning him money. Skip, think about it, Skip. If, and he's winning games when the owner's wanting him to lose games. That's correct. So he won five of the last nine, and we kept coming in here on Monday saying, something's going on right. with those guys mm-hmm. because they pulled off some up. Remember, they upset the Eagles late right. in the year, and, and they were – they were giving hell to everybody they right. played. You could see them coming. Beat the Ray, we, we watched them. That defense was flying Woo. around. Woo. And all of a sudden, they just segue right into year two, and they go 10-6, and six, but they did not make the plus. But they still won 10 games. Right. And then he wasn't a fan of Tua, but he says, okay, I'm going to make it work. He right. wanted Deshaun. There's a big right. in, internal battle right. over this. And he's, he's his own man. And, and he took us an internal stand, and then they say, well, he won't collaborate. Right. But what did they do last year? They had a bad stretch, and they lost yeah. seven. And then they turn it around, and they become the hottest team right. in pro football. They win seven. No, I ain't going to collaborate with you losing. You yeah. try to lose game. No, I can't That's be correct. no, I can't be no, no part of that. They wind up nine and eight. So you win five year last nine with a horrible football team. You, you open eyes around the league. You go ten and six, and then you do go nine and eight right. with a quarterback that you don't really believe in. Right. And you're not telling me he can't win in this league? You, you, are you trying to tell me that the Texans wouldn't be better off with Brian Flores yeah. than it, Josh McCown? Hell, the Dolphins would have been better off with him. Okay, all of them. I need, yeah. I need Brian Flores to answer me this. Bro, why you make the switch from mm. Ryan Fitzpatrick to Tua? You were 3-3, three and three, the man that just won two straight games. Did that come from up somebody it upstairs? It came from take- upstairs. You know it did. Skip, I was, I was like, hold on, wait a minute. Well, you said it on air. Yes. I said, hold on. You said you said this was basically going to be a red shirt year. Right. And and it was reported there was a mutiny yes. in the locker room, a yes. mutiny. It did, it the veterans make, did not want to go It didn't make there. sense. And remember what Ryan Fitzpatrick said? He said, I was shocked. He went to his yeah. next stop and said, I, I was shocked. Yes. I, I was hurt. Yes. <laughs> so now, now it, start, it, it makes a little sense. I'm not saying that Stephen Ross said that, but it sure makes sense. With the way things played out, you benching Ryan Fitzpatrick, yeah. who's three and three, okay. and the guy just, uh, got you, the, you put the start, the guy that you put in there is coming off major hip surgery. You got it, and you thought it was going to be a red shirt year for him. Okay. Final thought on the Houston Texans still looking for a coach. Uh, is is wait a second? Is Brian really a candidate here? Is he viable? Is is he in the mix? Well, think about what just happened. He blew the whistle on Bill Belichick. Yeah. He what's what happens in the locker room stays in the locker room. He he brought yeah. it out into yeah. broad daylight, yeah. right? Yeah. Text messages yeah. exchanged with Belichick. Mm-hmm. Belichick blew it. Yeah. And guess who runs the Texans? Nick Casario, Belichick. Jack Easterby. Jack Easterby, Belichick. They both came from the he Belichick. Didn't get that job. He's not getting the job. He didn't get There's that no job. way. What, no. Once you cross Bill Belichick and make him look bad. Those people None. will be you're you're out. You got to be behold, Skip. You got to be beholden to him forever. Whatever secrets you got, you better keep them because the only guy that's ever been allowed to come. Matt Patricia came back. He's in the advisory role, and Josh McDaniels. Yeah. No one else had left Mm-mm. and been able to return. No. Nope. No mercy. 
Well, according to Fox Bet Sportsbook, the Bengals are four-point underdogs against the Rams next weekend in Super Bowl 56, which is causing some people to take a flyer on Cincinnati. In fact, one well-known better in Texas known as Mattress Mac put four and a half million dollars in Joe Burrow and company to notch the upset. So, I mean, if you got mm. the money, you might as well have some fun. Maybe, mm. Shannon, scale of one to ten, how crazy is this bet to you? Ten. Yeah. This is a ten? Yeah, let's get back. Mattress Mac, he must, somebody must have <laughs> dropped a mattress on his head or something. But he he going through a losing streak lately, Skip. He bet 2.7 on Bama. He did. He bet two million on the Patriots. Yeah. I think he lost four million. Uh, he bet the uh, he, he the bet Astros. The, but he bet the Patriots' future bet yeah. to win it all yeah. this year, right? So okay. that yeah, and so bet the Astros. He could definitely get it back if he were to hit on hit on this one. I think four and a half paid him seven point seven. Skip. Yeah. Although he did bet on the guy I never bet against Tom Brady last year. He bet on him as dogs. They were three and a half point yeah, underdogs. He, he, and he, he won, won that, that one. one. Okay. I think Mattress Mac just got a lot of money. Skip. This this is a drilling rush for him. Like some people like to you know jump out of there, skydive. And some people like to do a lot of things that's adventurous. This is his adrenaline rush. But uh, I guess if you got it, I mean, why wouldn't you? But Skip, I, I like the Rams. And I get it. Uh, uh, you know, getting four and a half points. He's like, okay, this seems like a Cinderella type team. This thing could be yeah. good. Caesars has them as four and a half right now. Fox right. Bet's got it four. But I, I'm pretty sure he effectively gets four and a half points. Well, and here's the thing, <laughs> Skip. It probably would be more than that if he had to, be, if he had to bet on, on, you could on, make on, the, on the Bengals. Yep. It might have been five or six by you, now, Skip. You could make the case. So they keep, they're trying to keep it low, keep, uh, but I'm sure somebody's going to come in. I just think the Rams offense, I think overall the Rams have the better team um, and I'm expecting them to win, but this is crazy. Mm. That normally, Skip, normally big bets like this don't become, you know, we don't really know who the whale is that's placing this kind of money. But Mattress Mac doesn't care. Mm. He's been over oh, oh, the last four or five years, he's been p- placing these two, three, four, five million dollar bets. He's hit a couple of them. Yep. Um, unfortunately, he's missed the, the last several. Okay. Just for the record and for perspective. <laughs> Mattress Max, excuse me, Mattress Mac owns a furniture store in Houston, so he he uses his sports bet to mitigate sometimes his furniture giveaways. Right. Okay. So he's got guarantees. Right. So it it gets complex. Well, you know, some throwers give they used to have it. If this team win the Super Bowl, all the furniture that you purchase now is free. That's correct. <laughs> okay. So he's he's trying to mitigate the potential loss of right. that giveaway. Right. All right. But given that. <laughs> there is a quote in this story from the head of the sports book at Caesars that says the Joe Burrow magic is pulling fans in. And, and he goes on to say, especially in Louisiana with his college roots, right. but, but it's pulling in fans, I believe, all around the country. Yes. So scale of one to ten, how crazy is this bet to me? It's, it's a two. It's a lot of money. It's the spread. It's four point five right. million. But to me, I believe he's on the right side of the spread, and it starts and finishes with Joe Burrow. Oh yeah, I, I've been telling you for three weeks. He's the closest thing left to Tom Brady. He he is Brady esque. I'm not saying he'll ever be Tom Brady, but he operates his offense the way Brady always operated his. Mm-hmm. He can speed read it, find the most open receiver, and deliver a very catchable and accurate pass the way nobody else can consistently. His physical and mental toughness is up there with Brady's, and it's hard to gauge it because it's hard to see and feel that this quarterback's taken this much punishment, yeah. but obviously he went down nine times. Yeah, and still found a, and still found yeah. a way to win the ball game and make the, the most crucial throw of the game to hit Jamar Chase. Okay. Playing quarterback to me is mostly about intangibles. It helps to have a big arm, yeah. obviously, but it helps a lot more to have an accurate arm that's above average mm-hmm. and off the charts intangibles, mental, physical toughness under fire, poise under fire, pocket feet are more important than downfield speed mm-hmm. in the end, not that to discount Lamar or whoever, because that can, that can work too. Yeah. But this really works. This team believes in him as its leader. He's got way more outward swagger than Brady ever had. (laughs) Brady had inside the locker room swagger that he did not demonstrate. He he did not show the world. He was a different player behind closed doors as he was to the public. Because 
Leonard, uh, not Leonard, uh, 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 McCoy yeah. gave us a glimpse. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, you see, he played catch with Drew Brees with the kids. Mm-hmm. He's like, hey, how you doing, man? Congratulations. You had a great career. I got him. I got his ass. I got, I got, That's what I got, he said yeah, when I he got, got back got, in the locker room. Yeah, exactly. I got it. Okay. That's it. So I think the smart money is starting to say, well, wait a second. He's got his, his LSU connection yeah. with Jamar. Uh-huh. He's got Tyler Boyd, who's pretty good. Yeah. And he's got T. Higgins, Higgins yeah. who really rose and shone without Uzama and the— Well, they took they, d- they decided to, to, uh, to double Jamar Chase, and T. Higgins had one-on-one coverage, and he ate. T. Higgins is six feet, four inches tall. Mm-hmm. So he can play possession receiver, yeah. receiver the way a former Bengal did, who's a good buddy of mine, T.J. Hushmanzada. Yes. He's got that going on. Yes. And the point is, Joe Mixon, as I told you back, I'm a big OU fan, I kept telling you, this kid can play. Mm-hmm. He had a big issue that I cannot even, I would never try to defend, but they got him in the second round, and he should have been a fairly high first-round right. pick, mm-hmm. and now he's playing like a first-round pick. Yep. And that defense got hot at just the right time. And the more I watch Jesse Bates at safety, he's playing at a very high level. And my little man from Colorado, who used to be a Dallas Cowboy, Awuzie, is playing at a Pro Bowl level right. at corner. Right. So all of a sudden, you, you look at it and you say that, that little Mike Hilton, that slot corner, yeah. he is really good. Mm-hmm. And they've they've pieced it together with high picks and good free agent gets mm-hmm. to where all of a sudden it's credible to me. It's credible enough around Joe Burrow that. I, I, I'd take the four points. I, I, I wouldn't go four point five million, but uh, your man Eric Dickerson gave me twenty one points. Man, you can't take twenty one points. Just for, take the for, four and a half for five hundred bucks. Just take the four and a half, yeah. Skip. Huh? No, well, he did it. I'm not going to undo <laughs> that. Why would I do that? I'm not going to walk away from it. You mentioned the offensive line. The Rams know the one big advantage it, it that just they have. Is. Yeah, they have. Two right guards that they they swap out. Right. They, they alternate their two right guards. And they're gonna have the handful with ninety nine. And and again, he should he should eat all day. Mm-hmm. But somehow they went from nine sacks down to one sack at Kansas City, and obviously Burrow escaped uh, Chris Jones Twice. a couple of times mm-hmm. that where where you thought he was nailed right. and he slipped free. Yes. And maybe he won't slip free from 99 or I don't know what Vaughn. Vaughn's 40. 40, okay. And 54, Leonard Floyd. Yeah. But they got Greg Gaines, Skip. You know, he that dude, man, he don't get any credit, but he does all the grunt work. He does all the dirty okay. work. A'shaun Robinson, they got they got a nice front. They got a nice rotation. Uh, 45, I forget his name, Skip. But they got a nice little rotation that they can. But the question, the thing is, is that when you get there, you got to get him on the ground. Because Chris Jones got there several yep. times. Frank Clark got there several times. Yep. But somehow he was able to get out, either get first down with his legs or get rid of the football. Yep. I don't think you'll have that choice. They're going to be at home. That crowd going to be rocking. Mm. We're going to be rocking in SoFi. SoFi mm. going to be SoFi. I'm going to be right up in there with my Rams gear on. Are you? Mm. Give me some Rams horn. Well, you've talked about this game from the start <laughs> as a potential blowout. I know, but yes, no, no, you no, have. No, no, no. Yes, you're not going to get me. You I, make I, the I, case I, I, blow out. Mm. So if if you want to give me, I don't know, eight, no, I'd take eight right now. No, 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 no. Not the Super Bowl. Skip. Why not? No. Uh-uh. Well, the Ram Ambassador gave me 21. The you Ram should Bass- give me eight. The Ram Ambassador was feeling good. Yeah, yeah. he was. <laughs> they had just won. They going to the Super Bowl. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not making that mistake. No. But I skip four and a half million. Hmm. Well, you said it was crazy, so yeah. give me eight. <laughs> no, 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 I'm going to give you no eight. I it's crazy. I have a crazy. lot of questions mm. about Mattress Mac. Yeah. <laughs> I got some questions best. about it, too. I'm not so sure about it. <laughs> no mercy. Well, on Sunday, a storied venue that's seen everything has never seen anything like this. NASCAR comes to the L.A. Coliseum for the very first bush like clash at the Coliseum Sunday. And coverage begins at 5 Eastern, only on Fox. I mean, just looking at the visuals of this, I've covered plenty of football there. I have never seen racing in downtown L.A., and I love it. I think this will be really exciting to watch. So looking forward to it. Uh, A couple days away, guys. Well, Brian Flores is still in the running for Texans, for the Texans and Saints head coaching jobs, despite his allegations against the NFL and several teams. That's the latest. However, there is now skepticism that any other coaches 
will join Flores' class action lawsuit with one NFL coordinator of color and honestly saying, quote, only the coaches ready to retire would be willing to take part. So, Shannon, does it now feel like Brian Flores is going to be left to fight this battle alone? Yes, and I was afraid that was going to be the case, Skip. What he's done is really courageous. Um, he's put his own livelihood, uh, his own reputation at risk um, for the benefit of possibly others that come behind him. Mm. Skip, we've seen the movies where the big drug guy does something and he, everybody's scared. We need you to testify. I ain't testify. A man killed my family, do all this. <laughs> no, mm, I want no parts of that. That's not my job. Yep. And, mm. and I'm afraid, as you heard the, the one um, offensive coordinator of color say, yeah, if you're ready to retire, yeah, you can get behind this. Mm -hmm. But if you're trying to get in this business or you're trying to stay in this business, you're not touching this because mm. it's too much control. And I, I'm afraid is that Brian Flores is isolated, Skip. And you got 32 because even though he only accused the Broncos, the Giants, and, and uh, uh, Miami, it's 32. Mm. And when you attack one, you attack them all. And they're gonna they're gonna shield up, and they're gonna take on all comers. Now they're gonna throw the full force of their arsenal at him mm. to make sure they they're gonna try to stomp this thing out. Yep. And it's unfortunately, I'm not so sure that uh, uh, Brian is gonna get an opportunity to coach again. Mm. Um, and I don't know. Consider me a, a, a pessimist. I just don't see how. What he wants to have, what, what he wants to happen is the wholesale change in how they do business. Yep. When you've been doing business like this for so long, it's hard to bring about change, especially if they, when they don't want to change. That's the problem. So one of the oldest cliches in the book, <clears throat> one that I use often on this show is you can't fight City Hall. No. City Hall is now fighting back. <laughs> And it's an onslaught mm -hmm. from the highest levels. It is going to be very difficult in court for Brian Flores and his attorneys to overcome that onslaught, mm -hmm. that they have displayed their nuclear power publicly now in the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. and, and that's before you ever start in court. Yes. We saw Tom Brady, with all his stature and power as a player, try to fight City Hall. And he fought them in their backyard in Manhattan District Court over Deflate Gate. And he won the first round. And I was shocked by that. You right. and I were on the other show at yes. that point going back and forth. But about Skip, it. you remember the other owners was like, Commish, you better do something about this because you've been showing them preferential treatment. That's so you better saying. you better do something about this to let us know that you're not in uh, Mr. Kraft's back pocket now. That's what was happening because <laughs> Spygate came and it went. Yes. And all of a sudden, all the, the tapes, the mysteriously that they mysteriously disappeared. disappeared. Yes. OK, I got gotcha. you. And then Brady suddenly wound up in appeals court with the season approaching and said, I, I just can't do this anymore. Right. I don't have the energy. I don't have the time. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the NFLPA doesn't have the money to right. fight that. Yeah. So he just ceased and desisted. You got me. I'll serve four games to start mm -hmm. the season four game suspension. All right. Now I'm going to cite a really a fine piece of work by Mike Jones in USA Today today. He went to Mobile to talk to a lot of the black assistants. And by the way, Mike Jones is one of the top African-American pro football analysts in the country. And I, I want to compliment USA Today because it's got a deep roster of mm -hmm. some of the best yeah. African-American. Like there's Jarrett Bell and Mike Freeman and Mike Jones. So, mm -hmm. so they do a great job. Yeah. Ironically, they're represented. The NFL is not represented right. correctly with black head coaches, one of 32. So Mike Jones goes to Mobile to interview black assistants. And his takeaway is this. Many coaches and talent evaluators of color express both deep respect for Flora's attempt to affect change and surprise that the 40 year old would risk destroying his chances of coaching in the league ever again. And that many of his peers remain skeptical that positive outcomes will spring from this decision. Mm -hmm. OK, well, that's it. They're right there with you. Mm -hmm. You say you know, call me skeptical. Well, the, all, all these black assistants are skeptical right now because they're saying well, we, we we honor what you're doing. We love what you're doing. And it's going to get us weird. Right. 
And Brian Flores was like, come on, come all join me Mm -hmm. in my battle. Come actually join my lawsuit. So Hugh Jackson indicates a couple days ago, I will join. Right. Accuses Jimmy Haslam of trying to incentivize losing in Cleveland. Now Jimmy Haslam has fired back at him. And Hugh is backing off saying, "Eh, I don't know about, about joining the lawsuit. Hugh also says that he has no designs on ever returning to coach pro football because he's the coach at Grambling. Right. So he's, I think, 57 now. Mm-hmm. And he's just saying, I'm, I'm out. And yet, I, I don't wanna, really want to join. And his quote on a podcast yesterday was, it's hard. They, meaning the other uh, black assistants around the league, they're in a tough spot because no one wants to lose their jobs. These, these jobs in the National Football League are well-paying jobs. Yeah. And that's why, says Hugh Jackson, I laugh when people say, well, why didn't you expose it when it was going on? And he says, because nobody wants to lose their jobs. I, I got it. No. Brian Flores just flat out said up front, right. I am willing to lose my job to take this stand. Yes. And the only... Odd part about this, the only part I questioned was the timing, because I thought maybe Brian could stay the course and maybe land one of right. the jobs and then go forward and try to make his statement in power right. while, while he actually has right. a job right. by winning. That's that's the greatest way to right. make a statement. I can do this and I'll show you I'll win right. just the way I won in Miami. Mm-hmm. But the point is, after what he thought was a complete sham interview from the Giants because of the text exchange with Belichick, right. Brian just said, I felt so humiliated. I was so hurt by that. He said, I'm suing. Right. And he got two attorneys to go along with him, and here right. they are. Oh, yeah. And then he did a media blitz, and mm-hmm. he stood behind every last word in that lawsuit. And you want to talk about a powerhouse on television? He can speak it and convince right. you that every last word that is in the lawsuit, he believes with body and soul. But Skip, you know how change comes about. We've all been in a relationship and we think we can change the other person. Change only comes about when? When that person wants to change. Does the NFL really want to change? Because all the lawsuits, in a, everybody yep. you can file all the lawsuits you want to. Yep. If those 32 powerful men and women do not want to change, change is not coming about. It's really that simple. And I, under, and, and I, I like I said, Skip, you and I both have commended him. Because he put his reputation, he put his livelihood on the line. And there's a chance change might come about if these 32 men and women want to change. But he might not be the beneficiary no. of that change. No. Mm-mm. So another old cliche is no man is an island. Well, guess what? Brian is an island. island. Oh, He's absolutely. an island. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Boy, it's him against the world. Yeah. Man. And they got 32 sharks just waiting for him to jump in the water. Mm-hmm. And then they, they the, the men are too powerful because they, they'll, they, they'll just, they got enough money to throw at it. And at some point in time, these attorneys are like, well, Brian, you know, hey, we ain't, we ain't making no, they just ain't no pro bono mm-hmm. work, Yep. And he does have texts from Bill Belichick yeah. in his phone, but does he have the smoking gun? No. That you can go win in court no. with? Like I said, Skip, you need cooperating. Yeah. You need somebody, you need... Here, I mean, sometimes hearsay is admissible, but you got to have somebody say, you know what? I heard Stephen Ross say this. This is what he said. This was the date. He called Brian in, sat Brian down and says, look, this is what I'm willing to do if you do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Now you got something. Okay, if there's documentation, if Brian, you know, some people kept, you know, Comey, he kept copious notes. Yep. On this day, such and such had a meeting with the president. The president said this, this, and this. Yep. This, this, and this. Does he have notes like that? Mm. That's what you can skip. You're going to need documentation. I mean, you can't just go to the court and say, well, this is what happened. They go, like, huh? Yeah. So we supposed to just take your word for it? And the problem in court with being offered $100,000 is you did not accept $100,000. Right. So there's no money trail right. to find, right. right? So you should wait. Go ahead and get it, on, get it, get it documented. Yeah. NFL, you know, I just I need to let y'all guys know yep. that this is what transpired. Uh, because, Skip, you can't do that. I mean, if somebody, I tell you what, if a player get offered money, he better go tell the league that somebody offered him money. Because if it ever came out that he got offered, even though he didn't take it, the league going to be looking at him real suspicious. Yeah. Serious allegations are. So that, that's what it is. It is. But I, just, I, I hate, I mean, look, I, I, I want change. I think we all want change. But. The question is, does the 32 owners want change, Skip? Mm-hmm. Or do they like doing business the way they do it? 
Because it's not like they're losing three hundred and fifty million. They ain't losing no money. Mm-mm. Money like, affects change. They like their TV ratings. They, they, and all that. Everyone yeah. needs to collectively see that there's a problem going on here for there to be change, which I think we all agree on that. Uh, boy, and yes, they do. They like the money. We are not denying that, guys. No mercy. So we know this by now. The Rams have a lot of playmakers on the field. Hey, they got to the Super Bowl. But their biggest advantage may actually come from the sidelines. Sean McVay is set to coach in his second opportunity at the Lombardi Trophy. And after admittingly getting out coached by Bill Belichick in the Rams' Super Bowl 53 loss, he said that the past experience will help him next Sunday. McVay added, quote, if you really work hard at something, I think you give yourself a chance to get better. Couldn't agree more, right? Shannon, scale yeah. of 1 to 10, how much do you trust McVay in the Super Bowl this year? Yeah, week? Shannon, don't. I knew it. Dan, <laughs> Dan, I trust that's him. That's not what you said like Dan? a week ago. No, 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 because here's the thing, Skip. He understands having being schooled by Coach Belichick. A lot of coaches get caught up in. I mean, like literally schooled on the football he, he field. He did. He yes. got schooled on the football field. Because they scored three points Four. and had 260 total yards. Right. Go ahead. But I think the thing is, Skip, is that you have to the, let the game. The game will dictate what you need. And that's what Coach Belichick really does. He understands, okay, this game is going to be a shootout, so I need to take more risk in a situation like this, maybe go for a little extra. Or this game is going to be nip and tuck. Because, Skip, remember, like, what, midway through the third quarter, it was still 3 nothing, But Sean McVay was not approaching it like that. Yep. And I think he had a discussion with uh, uh, Coach Belichick after the game at some point in time in the offseason, and Coach Belichick set him down. You let the game dictate how what you call, how you call the game, and not just say, well, this is what I do. Because doing what you do will get you beat if the game does not dictate you need to do that. So I think, and, and plus, Skip, having been there, having been in that moment, he was the fifth coach to reach the Super Bowl twice in his first five years. Tom Flores, I think, just went into the Hall of Fame. Yep. Joe Gibbs in the Hall of Fame. Jimmy Johnson, mm-hmm. Hall of Famer. And Mike Tomlin, who's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame. Definitely. And McVay is the youngest to do it. Mm-hmm. So that just gives you a, 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 no, a, a sample of just how good of a coach that he is, Skip. And so for me, I believe having been there, understanding the moment, having gotten some, and that's what you should do. Somebody beats you at something, you know, and if they're willing to, and I think Coach Belichick has done a great job of that, helping some of the young coaches come along, parting uh, uh, some wisdom, giving them some advice, is that he sat him down and says, okay, this is probably where you made the mistake. This is what you probably could have done here or should have done here. Kyle Shanahan did the exact same thing with, uh, uh, with, uh, with Coach Belichick. So I trust him. And guess what? He's two years younger than Zach Taylor. Now they know each other. He was, Zach was on his staff. They know each other. Hold up. You mean to tell me Zach Taylor got a job without calling play? Oh, never mind. Mm. But anyway, mm. I trust him, and you should too. Mm. After the number that he did. He just keep beating Tom. Beat Tom twice and made him retire. Really? Mm-hmm. Made Hurt him heart. retire. Hurt my heart. Huh. So, huh. What happened what? when Tom faced McVay in the Super Bowl? Huh. I just told I, you he I, learned I, from he that. Lost. And ever since then, he ain't beat him since. Mm. He done beat him three times, Skip. Okay, I got some issues what to you uh, expose and put out in the middle of the table, what and I think you? you agree with every one of them. I'll go on the scale of 1 to 10 trust level. I'll go up to a 6 for Coach McVay, as I call him. The biggest obstacle this very young coach still faces is he's got the biggest ego you in go. the Rams franchise. <laughs> you know it, and I know it. He wants to be the star of Hollywood stars. He wants to, do, to be bigger. He wants to have a higher profile than Aaron Donald or Jalen Ramsey or Matt Stafford or Cooper Cup or even Odell Beckham Jr. It's his team, his way, and he has to impose his will and ego on the football game. And I don't care what you say, he will try to do it at all costs on Sunday at SoFi, a week from Sunday, obviously. I'll go to a six because I see in Coach McVay a little Mike McCarthy when it comes to challenges. Oh, there you, there Am I right? Go. He's got yeah. a little McCarthy yeah, going on did. in him, does yeah, he not? Yeah, he did. That, uh, that one the other night was 
I don't know what he was he thinking. He gets a little overwhelmed, a little overmatched. He plunges on check, and I'm like, huh? And it's head scratching <laughs> to the point of mind blowing because on the use check one, I'm saying, what, what, what do you see? What, what, right. what do people upstairs say? I, I don't see it. it but the first challenge was good because it was a first down skip, and yeah. they said Martin was short. So that was a good one. Mm-hmm. But that second one, I don't know what he was thinking I on that one. I don't know, and I've seen a pattern of this sort of behavior when it comes to challenges. So he was the youngest head coach in the league at age 30 when he was hired, yeah. and he's still the youngest. Yeah, and that's, and go, how many Super Bowls had he gone to? There's a second one, second and he ain't one. 35 yet? So you could argue he's on track, he's mm-hmm. on path to become the all-time winningest head coach because if you could keep yeah. this up with, with good, with highly talented Coach another 30 teams, years, right, you might. You, you just <laughs> might be able to pull this off. But I am here to say that I don't think he learned any lessons from the first Super Bowl. I think he does what he does. And I also think he's got a little hairy high school in him because he goes a little crazy and loses his poise. See what happened with the 75-yard bomb to Deshaun Jackson. Man, man, no you, longer a Ram. You don't want to show yards. no excitement. 75 yards to Ooh, look at DJ. That, that's not Odell. That's uh, DJ. Look at DJ. Uh, oh, he's uh, over there. Ragged. Yep. And look, oh, wait, there's Coach McGay. He's running up the tunnel. Yeah, we got him. And Give me some. Is, is this not a look at me moment yeah. by the head coach? You yeah. Ever seen a head coach run up the tunnel after his? I think receiver? I was running too because I was like, I think I was like four weeks post surgery. Okay. I was running like you were running me. like that. Yeah, I was running. I was running out of the studio. Yeah. Ever yeah. seen a coach do that? Yeah, look that's at That's a yeah. look at me. I want to share this. that. That's the team yes, going, baby. going to the halftime locker room. Yes, because he's beating Woo! the goat. He's beating Woo! the goat. I want to be on camera. I want to be in the middle of everything because I want to be the star of Hollywood stars. The last, That's who that guy is. The last time we saw guy, I mean, this young, I mean, Jimmy was older, but Jimmy had to, had to, you know, the hairspray had that thing wouldn't move. Jimmy Johnson. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Shaggy, that thing wouldn't move at all. Mm-hmm. So this, this young. Emmett tried to mess it up after the first <laughs> the Super, Bowl. Super Bowl. And he that was thing, having a hard time. That it's thing like, wouldn't move. It's like rubbing concrete, it was like, man. Sh- yeah, like them eighties. Them eighties lady had that big hair. Them southern yep. bear that sh- a whole can of hairspray. Yep. That thing wouldn't move. Nope. Mm-mm. Him and Kingsbury. Mm-hmm. Skip this. That young guard. They not like the uh, uh, the coach Shulers. The old the old guard of coaches. He got the a. They they date models. Mm. They, they, they 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 he a single guy. Normally head coaches, you come into the league, you got a wife. Mm. You, first of all, they wouldn't even hire you, Skip. If you didn't have a wife, because they know you about some bull job. Mm. That's too much power for you to be single, especially in L.A. So he is a different breed. It's a different breed. You know, I see him on IG. He be vacationing his shirt off with his boutine. Oh, I'm like, go ahead, go back, babe. Mm. So I ain't mad at him. But he got some. Now, I just imagine when he get that soup next week. Well, next- remember what he said about Cabo, that he made the deal to acquire. In the hot tub. Matt Stafford, they were in the hot tub. In the tub. hot tub, yeah. Yeah, that's where they came to. Yeah. They came to an agreement. What right? other coach you right. think? It? You think Cody McCartney getting in the hot tub? No. I you you think any of the coach? No. Probably him and Kingsbury, they boys. Yep. So I mean, Skip, let it be. You got see. I had to do that same thing. I had to get out of that old way of thinking mm. of the way they did it. This is a new age. This is new out here, Skip. Mm. Yeah. This is so new that I've never ever seen even a new age coach run up the tunnel after his receiver after the play he called went for a seventy-five yard run. blown coverage touchdown. They, they can't run like he's thirty-four. Mm. I know what I mean. Zach Taylor. What Zach Taylor is thirty-eight. Mm. Uh, 30, I think, I think 36. 36. 36, yeah. 36. Yeah, yeah 36. Mm-hmm. He got out. My bad. 36. So none of these other Skip, they can't run. Can you imagine Coach Saban trying to run up the tunnel like that? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine uh, uh, Coach Belichick about to be 70 years old trying to run? These coaches can't run. Mm. Sean McEe, 36 years old, in great shape. Mm. Mm-hmm. You were hating on that man, too. I'm ever since, ever since he done did that number on, Coach, on, on Tom Brady, beat him three times. Mm. Three times, the last three times they played, Sean McVay put something on him. Mm. Did that. What I love about Zach Taylor is, number one, he's from God's country, Norman, Oklahoma. Ah, oh, my goodness. Yeah, God's country, that's my country. And <laughs> he's just got an even keelness to him. He's got a poise. He, he's got a comfort zone. He's more comfortable in his own skin. He, go he for does it. not need to be the center of all attention. He go for it on, he go for it on every fourth down. These mm-hmm. new age coaches, that's all they do. But he doesn't need to gambling. brag about it. He, my guy ain't bragging skill. Yeah, he what he doing? He's just having a good time. Mm. That imp- Hold on. Now, you love Dan Quinn had his hat on the back. Was he up there slapping guy? You love that. Just because my team was so deadheaded under 
please drop the Mike McCarthy that I needed a little energy and a little, little life on the sideline, and I finally got it with the cap on back. Okay, so that's, my, that's what he's doing. By the way, I don't think Jerry's got any use for cap on backward. That's why I <laughs> think Dan Quinn's got no shot at you being the head coach. You to get a head coach? No. But that's what Coach McVay is doing. Mm. He's getting his team fired up, mm. getting them ready to play. They're like, man, you see, Coach? Mm. Let's get a look at his hair. What coach you know got hair like that, got that thing cropped like that, got the thing cropped, mm. got a little moose up in it, mm. and it up. Come on, Skip. All he wants is a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He wants his little star yeah. down there on the sidewalk. See, That's it, what he's angling he for. He has on fitted gray, got yeah. the European fit on the, uh, mm. uh, on the grays. Yeah. Skip, Skip. New age guy. That's new. Mm. You're going to have to gravitate towards that. You better watch that he doesn't trip over his own ego right in the middle <laughs> there, of the Super there Bowl. You go. We're at home, Skip. Huh? Get to sleep in his old that, bed. That might be even worse. Ooh. That might be more cause to trip no, over not. your own no, ego. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. Mm. They got this. Mm. They got this. I feel like you guys are secretly best friends, maybe, Shannon. You and yeah, me and Colt, me and Colt, you know. Hey, could, we, we, could might, we might go on vacation together. It's just an Odell thing. Right. It's an Odell thing. You it's said okay. I think he was single, Shannon, but he is engaged. He, he, he is. is. I, I, was, I, I, you know, I thought you knew something I don't know. No, 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 but I'm saying he, he was, when he got the job, he was oh, single. Fair, well, fair. Well, he's got he's a significant, young. for sure. He yeah. has a significant yeah. I did some research while you guys were chatting there. Definitely engaged. Yeah, Okay, all right. No mercy. Reggie Jackson hit the game winner for the Clippers in their 111-110 win over the LeBron-less Lakers last night. And while the shot dropped the purple and gold to three games below 500, the King actually took to Twitter to give Jackson props on the shot, writing, quote, great game, Mr. October with a big-time shot to end it. Salute. Laker Nation took some offense to LeBron congratulating the opposition, with one fan even replying, Kobe would never do that bleep. Have some Laker pride. Ooh. We're now joined by First Things First co-host Chris Broussard. Chris, hmm, did you have a problem with what LeBron tweeted? I didn't love it. I didn't love it. Um, <laughs> it's not the worst thing in the world, but look, in, in some ways, this is actually in, in LeBron's personality. You know, LeBron has always uh, been willing to give his opponents credit and even wanted them in some ways to succeed, not against him, obviously. But um, he's always been willing to encourage other players to help them get better, whether they're his teammates or opponents. Even you look at the Draymond Green situation, the incident they had in the finals when Draymond called him the B word. Now they're buddies and Draymond's with clutch and, you know, it, it's all good. Even LeBron's willingness to recruit Kawhi and, and other guys that have been kind of rivals to bring them to play with him. So there's a part of LeBron that views all the players in the league as partners in some respect, especially off the court when it comes to doing things outside of basketball. But overall, I just don't think this was a good look for him. Now, if after the game, if he were there and he was in the press conference or he was on Zoom and he said, great game, you know, big time shot by Reggie, all I can do is salute him when he does something like that. That would have been fine. But when you tweet it, it kind of came off like he was a fan. And then you throw in the nickname, Mr. October, and that really made it look like he's a fan, not a Laker. And so I get why people were bothered by it and upset. Again, not the worst thing in the world, but I think LeBron should have thought twice before pressing send on this one. But you hit the nail on the head. This is who he is. This is this is LeBron and Chris. You the, the one thing about LeBron, he is actually a fan. He happens to be the greatest fan in that sport, but he is a fan of the sport. And as you mentioned, when guys do things even against him, he will congratulate them. He has no problem. It ain't no we what we. It's, it's always he'll give credit and not say what we didn't do. Karis LeBert, he's like, hey, a guy got hot. He blew up our game plan. Whatever we had planned, right. he blew it up. He's going to give credit. And you're right. He looks at all the players in the NBA as a brotherhood. And it's basically us against them. That's the way he's always approached it. And that's the way he's going to approach it. Now, would I have done that? Absolutely not. Nope, nope. You get no kudos from me. <laughs> damn, like, damn, man, Reggie, man, Reggie did us in on that one. I'm going to keep that to myself, Skip. I'm not going to put it out there. But knowing LeBron... Chris, you and I both have followed LeBron for 19 years. He has not one time deviated from who he is 
as a player nor as a man. So I'm not surprised by this. I'm not surprised by the criticism either. I knew that was coming. But I think you'll also agree with this, Chris, and Skip and I talked about this earlier. Laker Nation has never really fully embraced LeBron, and they never will because they view him as an adversary to Kobe. Anything that's adversarial to Kobe, we ain't having it. We happen to have you aboard, but we're not going to put both of our arms. We'll put one arm around you, but we're not going to hug you like we did Kobe. Mm. Now for some real honesty about what happened last night. Can we be 100 about this? Yeah, we can be 100. This was LeBron's way of reminding everybody, I wasn't there last night. I did not participate in this game because if he had, there's no way he would have gone home and tweeted about Reggie They would have lost if he'd have been there. Okay, you got me. Who knows? They probably you know. would have. You know, you know, you know, don't do that, Skip. Don't do that. The, the point is <laughs> that LeBron has ADD, Attention Deficit Disorder. If he's not the story, he's got to make himself the story. How many followers does he have? Like 7 billion or whatever it is. He knows he can just sit at his keyboard, maybe after an unfortunate third glass of wine, because I think he was just sitting at home watching the game. Why he wasn't at the game, I don't I mean, know. I mean, maybe he had a, bottle of, maybe he had a couple of glasses yeah. of Camus. Okay. Who cares, Skip? Ali LaForce said he was off-site doing rehabilitation, doing treatment. I, yeah. I have no idea. He was at home. He just stayed, <laughs> stayed at home. And so he's got to make himself the story for all the wrong reasons. He knew exactly what was going to happen when he hit sin on this. He knew Laker Nation was going to be in an uproar. How dare you? He could have tweeted, congratulations to my squad for fighting back because they went on a 43 to 27 run. They were down 17 late in the fourth, uh, third quarter and 43 to 25 all the way to they had a one point lead, right? right? And then Reggie Jackson happened. Right. So there's no reason to congratulate him because Kobe, no, no, Kobe wouldn't have done that because nobody else would have done it except for LeBron James. Kobe would have came in and said, you know what? I'm glad the trade deadline is vastly approaching. All you bums about to get traded. Mm. That's what Kobe would have done. Well, LeBron's done that, <laughs> that before was, in hey, Cleveland. Hey, hey, Chris, is that what Kobe would have done? You bums can't none of you bums play. As a matter of fact, get out of my shoes. Everybody mm. that's wearing Kobe's, take them off because you're not mm. worthy. <laughs> yeah, well, LeBron once said in Cleveland, we are top heavy as you know what? thereby dismissing all the rest of the roster. So same idea, right? Okay. okay. So Kobe would have done it. All right. So, so the, the so point Skip, was. Go ahead, Chris. Skip, you think that LeBron, you said he knew exactly what Laker Nation was going to say to his yep. tweet. You think he was trying to upset Laker Nation? Well, he, he just knows that he makes himself the center of attention after a game he didn't even play in, and it's for the wrong reason, but he can't help himself. He knows exactly. If I hit sin, everybody's going to go crazy. And I don't care because I haven't been playing. What's he missed, five games Yeah, now? everybody know. Had okay. LeBron been there, we'd have won. Had LeBron been there against Atlanta, we'd have won. We'd have, we'd have, we'd have won like five or six games, and okay. we'd have had a, a and, positive and, and record now. One other point before I hand it back to you, Chris. Remember, Laker Nation's on edge right now. They're, they're rubbed raw because you, you realize in the last 37 games against the team in the basement at, at what used to be Staples, the Clippers, that they have lost 30 out of the last 37 games against the Clippers. Mm -hmm. They've lost the last five against the Clippers, and LeBron is sitting at home congratulating a Clipper on beating the Lakers. And Are guess you what, kidding? And me? guess what we got the Clippers don't have? Nothing. A ring. Oh. When the last time the Clippers got one of them? Yeah. Well, In the last right. 37 games. Okay. Well, look what happened last night. You had AD. You had Russell Westbrook. You, they didn't have Kawhi. They didn't have Paul George. And they still beat you. Well, that's what I'm mad about. So you mad about a tweet. That's what I'm mad about, Chris Broussard. Because what did they tell us? If one of the superstars is out, we got two that can carry the team. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not mad about the tweet. Everybody mad about the tweet. You should be mad about that. They got, we had two superstars. They got none. And they beat us. I tell you what, though, there's a silver lining in what you saw last night. Where is that? And that was AD. It's, it's at AD. 830 and what do you have? 17, 17 rebounds. And what the last four games, AD has been great. Mm -hmm. He's been averaging like 30 and 12, two and a half blocks. And the great thing is he's doing it inside. Yesterday, 12 of, nine of his 12 shots he made were dunks. He's only taken like six threes in the last four games. So if AD continues to play like this and LeBron comes back and takes off where he left off, oh, the, the Lakers are going to be dangerous. I'm not saying they definitely win in the West, 
But they will be dangerous if LeBron and AD are playing at this level. We've been saying all year, as much as Westbrook's been criticized, that AD has to step up and be the AD from the bubble. And he has been the last four games. We'll see if he continues it. Yeah, but Chris, how do you explain that, that AD was AD last night and they fell behind by 17 at home to a Clippers team without their two best players? Mm -hmm. And it took Russell Westbrook turning into not West Brick in the fourth quarter because Russ started making shots. He made five shots in the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden they charge back in and they take briefly the lead yep. until AD missed the last runner in the lane that could have won the game. So how do you explain, as overpowering as he's been, 30 and 17 with seven offensive rebounds, right. you still fell behind by 17? That's a bad sign. Yeah, well, it, 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 to me, it's two things. One, AD is the second guy. He really, like, it, when he was in New Orleans – putting up these numbers every night. They, they made the playoffs twice in seven years. So his great play doesn't necessarily equate to you winning. And then secondly, the other guys, their defense on that last play, the Reggie Jackson move. You know, I mean, Westbrook's defense was atrocious. But it was but, all right, he laughable. split both of them, him and, and yeah, and Reeves with the, with the, uh, Spin move. Yep. But Reed, and so the Reed other got him habits cut off, are still he did, bad. He did what he was supposed to do. He got him cut off. He right. cut him Reed off. did right. a good job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if Russ gets there, Thank you. He should, he, they should shut Reggie down and trap him in the corner. But here's the thing. And look, the, the standard's been lowered for the Lakers. And I've said all year, as bad as they look, they got a puncher's chance. And the puncher's chance is if AD and LeBron are playing at the top of their games, you have to give them a shot. All the other problems, the age, the lack of shooting, the lack of defense, defensive focus, Russ's issues, that, those are problems. But if you have LeBron and AD, that still gives you a heck of a right hand. And that's what the Lakers have to count on. I think Russ is counting on that. You saw his quote from a couple of days ago. Hey, we just get in the playoffs, everybody's zero and zero. Okay, we'll get in the playoffs. He knows, like, let's just get there and then take a shot. <laughs> Swing for the fences, and, and LeBron and AD give you a heck of a stroke. Hey, Chris, that's like me being in the Northeast right now under that blizzard. Man, once I get to Cancun, it's going to be all sun. But I'm right here right now. You not in the playoffs. <laughs> you not even in play in. So, Shannon They're not Sharp. in yet. What are they, ninth day in the play in? They're about ninth. ninth or tenth, I think. Okay, give me a quick response here. Am, am I to expect that? LeBron James is going to leave his home keyboard and actually participate in a basketball game tomorrow night against the Knicks at <laughs> the we Crypt. We, 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 see how, huh? we see how we feel. We see how we feel with mm -hmm. that swollen knee. Yep. Swollen? Hold on. That's a bad sign. Now, you let, let Tom Brady that say his knee was swollen. You're like, oh, my goodness. He won a Super Bowl on a torn MCL. And you believe that? I do believe that. Okay. No mercy. With Kyrie Irving only playing in road games and Kevin Durant out with an injury, the Brooklyn Nets are reeling as they're currently on a six-game losing streak. And despite only playing on a part-time basis, some people close to Kyrie are saying the superstar only views his NBA career as just a nine-to-five job. So, Shannon, how much is Kyrie's approach to basketball hurting the Nets right now? It's hurt him a lot, but it doesn't surprise me because he's told you that. Kyrie already told you there are big, bigger things than basketball to him. Yep. I mean, I didn't need somebody else. I, I heard him say it out of his own mouth. So I didn't need someone close to him to tell me that's how he views the game of basketball. And I don't have a problem with that if I'm not his teammate. Yeah. If I'm his teammate, I got a big problem. And Kevin Durant and James Harden will never say this publicly, but they got a problem with this also. Mm -hmm. I think there's a greater chance that there's a big one in Brooklyn next year as opposed to a big three. I'll buy that. Because they signed up, they thought they were going to have, obviously, nobody envisioned the pandemic. But I thought, I think they thought, okay, we've got a great chance to do something special here. Everybody is on board. Yep. Kyrie doesn't seem to be on board. How moving forward do I go? And it doesn't seem like the mandates are going anywhere anytime soon. Mm. So how do you build a championship caliber team with a guy that can only play half the time? Yep. James Harden doesn't seem to be the James. He can give you a game here and there, Skip. But he's not the James Harden that he was last year before he had that hamstring injury. Yep. And he's not the James Harden that we've seen in a couple of games this year. More times than not, he hadn't looked like himself. Mm. And KD's gone. 
So for me, Skip, yeah, that would be a big problem for me because I was counting on we came to this thing together. We brought this thing together to do something special. And two of the guys seemed to be all in. One guy's like, hey, hope is, what I, hope is, is a hobby to me. There are, other, there are more pressing issues yep. in the world. Yep. And that's what my focus is right now. So it is a big problem for the, for the Brooklyn Nets. And I don't know, Skip, how do you resign Kyrie? Now, they could have offered him extension, and they didn't. Mm. Like I said, I believe there's a greater chance for a big one in Brooklyn. That's Kevin Durant, yep. as opposed to a big three come next year. I was such a big Kyrie fan. This has hurt my heart. This has angered me because it's such a waste of all-time great ability on, on the part of all three. Mm -hmm. Has there ever been greater talent assembled than those three yeah. together? Kyrie has special ability that he flashes occasionally on the road, mm -hmm. but it's only on the road. So his attitude, his approach to basketball that is just nine to five has clearly just infiltrated the psyches of all of his teammates because they all look lost. They look deadheaded mm -hmm. when I try to watch them. I can't even watch them anymore because he has turned the preseason prohibitive favorite into an also ran. His approach, mm -hmm. his attitude, mm -hmm. the, the, the contender that I thought the Nets would be is now nothing but a pretender yeah. because – James Harden looks like he's packed it in to me because uh, I'm going to be nice about this. He's not in the best of shape. No, he, he just doesn't look right. He no. doesn't look like he's committed. <clears throat> he does not look engaged. And this looks was, like he's looking to move on. That is correct. And this is such betrayal because the driving force of assembling this three was Kyrie. Yes. He's the leader of this new pack that they put together because Kevin just went along with Kyrie. Right. You, you, I'll go to the Knicks. No, let's go to the Nets. Right. Oh, okay, I'll go to the Nets. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. The Nets had it all. And I, I'm with you. If I'm a teammate, if I'm Patty Mills or Joe Harris hasn't come back yet, but those kind of guys, they, they got to be saying, what are we doing? Because where are you going if he can only play on the road, even in the playoffs? Here's the thing, though, Skip. You said Kyrie is the guy that's most responsible for it to bring him together. Yeah. But he's the least, he's the guy that's least bought in. Least. And yeah. Skip, I just, if I'm the Nets, I'm not so sure I'm not entertaining trading him. Because if he leaves, he, can, he has a player option. Yeah. If he leaves, I get nothing. I agree with that. Remember, Skip, I mean, that's what, that's what happened to, to uh, uh, OKC. Yeah. Kevin Durant, and you got nothing. At least LeBron did a sign and trade, and the Cavaliers were able to get draft picks. Mm -hmm. He leaves, you get nothing. Yeah. Mm. And it's just complicated. Like, at this point, he's just complicated. There's always something going on. No mercy. So in a recent discussion, Kevin Garnett and Jamal Crawford agreed they'd each take Joel Embiid over Nikola Jokic in a one-on-one -on -one matchup if both players were healthy. So, Shannon, thoughts? Do you agree? Oh, yeah, one-on-one, -on -one, but give me a real game. Mm. I'm taking Nikola Jokic. I'm mm. taking Yoke. Why? 26-14-8, uh, mm. shooting 57% from the floor, 38% mm. from three, 81% from the free throw line. Mm. All of those numbers are better than Joel Embiid at set points. He averages three more rebounds, double the assist. Mm. Oh, hey, what? And leaves him in steals. Mm. P.E.R. better. Who's, Yoke is the man. Who, who's better on defense? Who's the better rim protector in a one-on-one -on -one matchup? Jokic would get destroyed because I'm not sure he could get a shot off. Hold on. Are we playing basketball since, since when did the NBA play one-on-one? -on -one? We mm. got real basketball. Who's the reigning MVP? I don't care. You do care. I care about right here, right now. Who's the favorite to win this year's MVP? MB. 26 14 and 8. Let that sink in for just I, a second. I, I can let and he's doing this without Jamal Murray mm -hmm. and Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. Would you believe Embiid shoots four times the free throws that Jokic does? And only and matters three it, points. Huh? And only average three more points a game? Damn. Uh, yeah. Well, are they going to call fouls in the one on one? Because if they do, it's a rout. No, no, no. Who the better player straight in an NBA game? NBA, who the best big man in basketball? Nikola Jokic. You know what? It's like you always say to me, if you polled the 30 GMs on this, they're taking Embiid. No, they're not. Yes, they No, they're are. not. I'm sorry. No. Obviously, health comes into play, but if you're just taking him in a vacuum for one season. Nah, yeah. I stop vacuuming. My yeah. house stay clean. Really? I got one of them little robots to come down and just sweep it up all the clean up <laughs> all the time. So I ain't got no vacuum. Well, I just vacuumed up your argument no, and I threw skip. it right in the garbage. Skip. Your guy <laughs> shooting 50% from the floor. Yeah. My guy shooting 57. Mm. Your, guy, your guy gets 11 rebounds. Mine gets 14. Your mm. guy gets 
gave you four assists. My guy gives you eight. Mm. My guy shoots better from the three, better from the free throw line, more steals. Mm. What, what, and I can count on him. Who's made his team better this year? I think it's Embiid. One guy's, oh, my stomach hurt. I'm going to miss the game. I'm sorry. I got to go. Right now. Skip Shannon, great stuff Embiid. today. Have an awesome <laughs> weekend, Super Bowl week next week. The Hurt is next with some of my favorite ladies. Have a good